Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Hi, y'all. It's Friday already, and it's a rainy night in L.A., a rainy morning, rainy night, rainy morning. And I feel like it's raining all over the world. A rainy, 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 You can get involved by calling 888-7753. Say that again. 773 Jesse, J E S S E, Jesse. My biblical question for this week, and it's a doozy, the biblical question. And I, uh, uh, several people have responded to it, so at least you're looking at yourself a little bit. What connects you with the physical world? What connects you? With the physical world. Be in it, but not of it. What connects you with the physical world? Is it amazing? When you realize this, it's going to blow your mind. Didn't I blow your mind this time? Didn't I? It's going to blow your mind. We have every way that you can watch and support the show. Listen on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. JesseLeePeterson.com slash show. And if you're like busy walking in the rain, singing in the rain, dancing in the rain, and uh, you just can't sit and watch the show as it's happening, and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to have to podcast later. I just have to wait to podcast. Well, you could be listening to the show while you are doing walking, dancing, and singing in the rain. Isn't that amazing? Working out, laying up at a beach, acting weird on an airplane. Whatever you may be doing, you can be listening on your iPhone or iPad by calling the listen line at 641-793-1500-641-793. One five zero zero, and to donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee dot com slash j j j o p talk. Buymeacoffee dot com slash j o p talk. All right, and there's a line open. Somebody want to jump in? It's Friday. And every Friday is like, get it off your chest day. Every Friday is Express Yourself Friday. You Tom like a mug. You need to go to go to go to go and get yourself bleached. Because everything you say about black people and you sitting up there looking like a tar baby. Uh, it might sound like a semantics argument, but he's a great alien. Ah! I wonder if he's been smoking pot. So he is joining us today to talk about diversity and why it matters. Yeah, but then who runs the ship? 
<laughs> a group of suspected migrants are under arrest this morning after they were discovered squatting in a home where guns and drugs were found, but that's not all. He said, quote, a suspicion of mine is that there are too many preachy females. Recently, they tell me they don't like me to talk about race. Well, I'm going to talk about it anyway. Uh, thank you all. I do that with freedom. All I care about is freedom. <laughs> I see so much greatness in this city that has so many great African-American leaders. Uh, we know what they want to say, uh, but they don't have the courage to say the N-word. <laughs> And what they mean by DI, in my opinion, is duly elected incumbent. Truth is, it's some challenges that come to being black. Who's driving this boat? <laughs> what the? Amazing. <laughs> what a video. The uh, Anchor Baby put that together, the American Anchor Baby. My first time seeing it. Amazing. What a amazing. crazy, crazy, mad, mad world we live in. It's a mad, mad world. It is hell on earth. Some people are afraid to die. You already did. Some people are afraid of going to hell. You already in hell. What the? Uh, you're afraid of coming out of hell. That's the issue. Most people, speaking of that, did you know that most people are afraid to come out of hell? They wonder, what will I be if I'm not in hell? Who will I be? What will I be? What will my life be? What would I feel? What would I think if I'm not in hell? They love their hell. It's amazing to see that too, but I understand. You're already in hell. Look around, look inside and look around you. 888-7753-773. So we had the men's forum last night, the first month, first Thursday of the month. I cannot find words to express it. But I'll throw out a few words to, to make an attempt to express the depths of it. I would use the word amazing. More than amazing. More than wonderful. More than marvelous. Greater than, than eyes can see or heart conceived. It was amazing. It was like, you never know how these meetings are going to, I don't. And so I never have any expectation of what's going to happen at the men's forum, lady forum, ladies forum, uh, Sunday morning meetings. I just don't have any expectation because I never know. You just don't know what's going to happen. Well, it was inspiring, eye-opening. I want to say sad, but I can't use the word sad because people, all human beings are in hell until they come out of it. And hell is hell on earth. And it's weird. It's all in the mind. It's not even real. It's all in the mind, in thoughts. Your hell is in your thought. If, if you don't attempt to overcome anything that you read or heard about from God or in the Bible or whatever, that should be the one thing you should work at. If you don't work at anything else, it's coming out of the hell of your imagination. When the Bible says, bring every thought into captivity, all thoughts are all lies all the time. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. My thoughts are not yours. He was not playing. The depths of that is deep. And yet all human beings, until they start working on it, is connected with thoughts. And they call it life. 
They call it life. So I closed my eyes when I got home. Only for a moment, and the moment was gone. I'm like, what the? And then when I woke up, it was raining. I'm like, what the again? <laughs> what a, me- a raining night in L.A. It's been rain. It's like it's raining all over the world. Thank you, God, for the rain. We had enough. And to the white people, since you are in control of everything, you control the climate, you control other people, you keep them poor, you keep them uh, victims, you, you everything your fault. Why don't I'm, I'm asking you all to make it stop raining for California for at least another year or two? All right, stop the rain. White supremacists, stop the rain. Speaking of age, I remember when I was growing up, older people live forever. And I remember them living, the ones I knew, lived forever, for like 80, 90, 100, 100, and I think Monsieur, Monsieur or Miss May, uh, Miss Evelyn, one of them was like 110. 110. Somewhere in the Bible it taught about a guy that lived to be a, I had a thousand years, Methuselah, a thousand years old or something. But now, young people are dying like flies. They're not living a full life. It's amazing to see it. But I understand. And suicide in America today, especially with, amongst men, according to the reports, is out of control. You got to be out of your mind to commit suicide, don't you think? It's a spiritual battle, a warfare between good and evil. And so speaking of age, I want you to check this out. According to USA Today, The world, not America, not California, but according to this report, USA Today, the world's oldest man died on Tuesday. The world's oldest man died on Tuesday, one month before his 115th birthday. Watch this from USA Today. We show you the picture, according to USA Today, of the world's oldest man. He's not fat or anything. That's how it used to be. People got old men and women. They got old, but they didn't get fat. Isn't that amazing? I would love to have interviewed him before he died to see what he's thinking at age 115. 115 years old. So we were showing the picture for those who are not watching but you're listening of the world's oldest man. You did. USA Today is also reporting that the, the oldest person in the world is a woman at 122 years old. Where is she? What a mess. It's amazing. It's a spiritual battle. A hundred and may his soul rest in peace. May his soul rest in peace. I would want to interview that woman if there is true that there is a a woman that's still alive, the world oldest woman at 122. 
Amazing. So, our country is in decline. And when you really smoke on it, when you really think about it, it's been like building up for a while now. It's been going down, 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 and the Republicans just been talking about it. The Christians just been talking about it, but no one was stopping it. No one was stopping it. It just happened while everybody talk and watch it happen. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. And I know one of the reasons, but not the only, is that men are becoming weaker and weaker and weaker. And like the family, when the man is weak, the wife and children fall apart. Likewise, when the man is weak, the world fall apart. God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman. And my country is truly in decline. It's interesting, too, to see it. This is from KTLA. A woman who was caught on camera violently smashing the windshield of parked cars with bricks. Smashing the windshield of parked cars with bricks in Los Angeles has been arrested. And she black, watch this, appeared to be black. A serial brick basher caught on camera, smashing several cars for no apparent reason. You should feel safe to park your, your car on a street and not have to worry about um, a crazy lady a with a brick. <laughs> You can see the woman get out of a newer model white Volkswagen Tiguan and walk over to Meyer's car and then throw the brick at the windshield. She then picks up her weapon and leaves. On the same day, showing a woman in similar clothes get out of the same vehicle and smash the windshield of what appears to be a Tesla several miles away at Camden and LaGrange in West LA. The woman again taking the brick with her. This person needs uh, uh, help. It seems like she's targeting luxury cars. It doesn't seem like she's doing it to just any car. So I think there is maybe a message that she's trying to send or something. Isn't that amazing? Now you see why the white folks don't want the blacks in their neighborhood. I rest my case. Look what they do. I don't care what they say. I'm in love with you. Isn't that something? And that spirit that is causing her to do that, because they're not her, she's driven by evil. I don't even know, I don't know if she realizes it or not, but it's not her. But that same spirit that is causing her to smash windows like that for whatever crazy idea she has, it's the same spirit that causes you to have fear doubt, suicidal thoughts, loneliness, pride, jealousy, envy, strife, revenge, emotions, fake love emotion and fake hate emotions. It's the same spirit. Jealousy. It's the same spirit that caused that woman to do that is dwelling in you. It's the same spirit that caused you to think about the past or the future, which doesn't exist. It's the same spirit that tells you, you don't want to die alone, so you go get married just not to die alone, and all you catch is hell that eventually kills you. The same spirit. That was from ABC. And that same spirit causes you to compare yourself to others. It causes you to think you know what you want. It causes you to think that you want to build a life for yourself, a future. It's the same deceiving spirit. 
It's the same spirit that makes you think racism exists, white supremacists exist, anti-Semitism exists. It's the same spirit. It's the same spirit that caused mothers of men children to do everything in their unlawful power to destroy the man by destroying his children, taking them to court, trying to take the children, keeping them away from the fathers, and the weak men who go to court to fight it, they may get, the court may say, okay, you can have visitation to write with your own child. And then she fight to make sure that's not easy, that doesn't happen easily. It's the same spirit. And that spirit is no different than um, this woman that I'm about to show you now. No difference between that woman and this woman. Watch this from X. Can I do that with freedom? All I care about is freedom. That's fine. I've been there before. I'm not scared. I've been there before. This is hurting my elbow. It's hurting my wrist. She look like a crazy chicken. <laughs> Look at that demon. Wow. How you like being sitting next to that one on your way to Boston? Wherever the plane was going. She looked like a crazy chicken. But that's the same spirit as uh, uh, that other woman that was throwing bricks in the car. That's the same spirit that makes you want to hurt yourself and others. It's the same thing. There's no different. It's the same demons. It's the same demon. And it looks like she said, and I'm, I'm confirming it, she said that in the end she says, this is George Floyd. We're George Floyd now. You did it. It's the same spirit, folks. It's a battle between good and evil. And I don't like saying a battle between good and evil because for good, there is no battle with evil. Evil is not even competition for good. Evil, which it was, it wish it did have a, any power against good. It doesn't. It's been defeated. You just don't know it. That the evil inside of your imagination, your heart, and those emotions are evil, and they have been defeated, but you don't know it. It's done. It's over. But you believe it's real, and you give it life. That's what's ruling in America today. I never imagined one day I'd be riding on an airplane. I was on that one. But, and some crazy female would start yelling like that. Or anyone, really. I never imagined that one day on airplanes, people would wear pajamas and come on the plane looking like trash. Airplane flying used to be so classy. And it used to be an honor to be able to fly. Now it's like riding a bus. It's like riding a bus. According to ABC, last Wednesday, police arrested several suspected migrants who they found squatting with guns and drugs in the basement of a Bronx home. Watch this from ABC. A group of suspected migrants are under arrest this morning after they were discovered squatting in a home where guns and drugs were found. But that's not all. The group, the guns, the drugs were all in the same room as a seven-year-old boy. Hopping out of their squad cars after they got a call about a man with a gun. When they arrived, they chased 24-year-old Hector De Soso Viata, believed to be from Venezuela, into the basement of this Hull Avenue home. Another man, 22-year-old Javier Alborno, tried to get away with another 
another gun before he was also arrested. Playing on your screen now are four of the eight suspects that were under arrest being walked out one by one from police. When a search warrant was in place, investigators recovered two more loaded guns, three loaded extended magazines, a box of ammunition, and a bag of ketamine mixed with cocaine. They are being investigated right now, all tied to a string of robberies that investigators are seeing over in Bergen County. Amazing, huh? That's not in Venezuela. That's not in Nicaragua. That's in the United States of America. I know somebody um, maybe walked in on the end of that and they thought, oh, wow, look at those foreigners over in a foreign country. Look at those foreigners over in Nicaragua. No, that's right here in America. That's in our country. And according to the New York Post, six, listen to this, six of the eight gun-toting, drug-dealing migrants, squatters, busted last week in Bronx, in the Bronx, were cut loose without bail. According to the New York Post, six of the eight, eight gun-toting, drug-dealing migrants, squatters that were busted last week in the Bronx were cut loose without bail. And what do you think they're going to do next? They're going to do that again. And next time it'll be worse. It's over for my country. It's gone. According to Fox, nearly 7.3 million migrants are known to have illegally crossed the borders since Biden took office. 7.3, just since Biden took office. Not those that were already here. What do you think going to happen? And some news outlets are reporting that international crime rings on American soil now. We used to report this kind of stuff happening in Europe and other countries. Now it's home. Foster's reporting that Oakland County Sheriff is sounding the alarm again about the international crime ring targeting high-end homes in the area. Watch this from Fox. The home's empty, very large, upscale homes, backed up to areas with little or no observation from neighbors. Properties that back up to the woods or a golf course where a team of burglars can go undetected. Months ago, the sheriff formed a task force and caught seven people from Chile who'd been breaking in and getting away with millions, 800,000 in jewelry and cash from one home alone. The Chilean gangs have been hitting us very hard. Cash, jewelry, very high-end purses, that's pretty much the target. They're super well trained when they get here, highly organized, they look like ninjas, they're all masked up. Even using a jammer on wireless alarms, the sheriff recommends hardwiring your alarm system and be sure to turn it on. The sheriff also says don't post on social media. A lot of people post a selfie, on my way to Florida for two weeks, and you've just told everybody your house is empty. Yeah. All of those arrested had come to the U.S. through a visa waiver program. Amazing. These people are coming from, these asshole people coming from asshole countries. Remember when the great, the great white hope Donald Trump said something like that? Do you believe him now? Do you believe him now? 888-7753-773. I want my country back. I'll be back in a moment. There's a line over if you want to jump in there. We're going to get to your super chats and everything. Back in a moment.
I have books that are amazing. Highly recommend you get them. Seven Guaranteed Steps to Spiritual, Family, and Financial Success Guide. Even if you're not starting a business, but you have a job. Or you're on welfare. It can help you if you do. Be doers of the word, all right? From rage to responsibility. From rage. That's what I write about in the first chapter, especially how I overcame. Scam. How the black leadership exploits black Americans. They are using them. And blacks are too willing to be used. And then my last book, The Antidote, Healing America from the Poison of Hate, Blame, and Victimhood. They are all amazing books, and they are helpful. Go to rebuildingtheman.com if you want an autographed copy or call 800-411-2663. Seven seven five three, seven seven three. That was in Oakland County, Michigan. I'm told, Michigan. You know, now they're telling you go back to landline alarms. Remember when they said you can switch over, and everybody did. Not everybody. Now they're saying because no police, letting the criminals out, open border, according to Fox, seven point three, nearly seven point three million. Illegal, they said migrant. Illegal aliens are have known to cross our country, cross our borders, and you have to pay the price for it. Not the illegals. No police. It's like the government. It's not. It's like it is deliberately setting us up, creating problems. Anyway. The Hake Report coming up at 9 a.m. this morning. The Hake, H-A-K-E, report.com from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific time. And James Hake is on fire. And at 12 noon, brand new episode today of the TV. Brand new. A very, I think you're going to like this one. I think you're going to say, wow, that was inspiring. A brand new episode with Loza, Loza Alexander. He is a conservative rapper and producer, best known for his version of Let's Go Brandon. Watch this. Next time on The Fallen State. What's important to me, man, is our people. You know, our people to wake up. You feel hell? Absolutely. And there's no way I believe that when you die, nothing happens. I have more anger and resentment towards my enemies, ex-girlfriends. When you forgive your parents, you're going to love your enemy. You and I and no one else has a right to be angry at anyone. Have you ever been a slut maker? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. At 12 noon, thefatherstate.tv. Check out our merch there, too, at thefatherstate.tv slash store. Also, you can donate there, thefatherstate.tv slash donate, or on locals there as well. And then, if the Lord is willing and the creek don't rise, the American anchor baby. At 4 p.m., the American anchor baby. And he's going to be flying high. Not off fentanyl. Not off pot. Not off alcohol, but off natural energy given to him by God. One of the best pilots on this side of heaven. Check him out. you see. At 4 p.m. today, Pacific time. 
4 p.m. Pacific time. I just want to finish this. Oh, then Sunday morning, fellowship. Come on down. Amazing fellowship. I was counseling with someone yesterday. We have the best counseling service on this side of heaven. But anyway, come on to the fellowship at rebuildingtheman.com slash church. Sundays at 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern time. 2 p.m. Eastern time. All right? Uh, I was counseling with someone over in Austria, something like that, yesterday. Way over yonder in a foreign country. And it was interesting. And I've seen it, I mean, you know, counseling for a long time now, so it wasn't new, but yet interesting in that what was happening in their life and the reason it was happening is happening in every human being's life. Everyone, the same thing, different situations, but caused by the same problem, unconsciousness. Isn't that amazing? You are asleep and don't know it. And Grandpa, tell me about the good old days. So I told you about the illegal aliens squatting there in New York or somewhere. Yeah, Bronx. And how they got out, they just let them out. At least, according to this report, most of them. And now, according to Fox News, international crime ring is in America. And we just played you one, an example of it from Oakland County Sheriff there in Michigan. Well, CBS is reporting that male, male theft complaints have jumped 327%. It's still the male. 327% since 2018. And uh, a big part of the problem stems from the keys USPS uses for mailbox. They use it for mailbox. Watch this from CBS. This is them going up to one night in January and actually taking the mail out of the mailboxes. And what they were looking for were checks. They were looking for debit cards. They were looking for lines of credit to get people's information. Police arrested the alleged mail theft crew after they targeted 2,200 addresses across suburban Chicago last year. Investigators also recovered replicas of postal arrow keys. Each master key opens hundreds of blue collection boxes and cluster mailboxes in a given area. We found countless examples of thieves using them to unlock mailboxes and steal what they want. Another way criminals get those keys, targeting the mail carriers who use them. A camera outside a New Jersey home captured masked attackers robbing this mailman. They took the arrow key. Incidents like this quadrupled over a five-year period. According to one government document, 82% of carrier robberies are motivated by arrow key theft. Amazing, huh? That's in the United States of America. That's not in Venezuela, Mexico, Cuba, Africa. That's in the United States now. And Joe Biden and his administration is allowing this to happen every day. They're coming in. These people are just coming across the border. You never, we, didn't, we heard about the black crime before all this started. Now you got double crime with other color people. And it's going to get worse. If ever we needed you, Lord, we need you now. It's going to get worse because Christians and non-Christians alike have been told that anger is good and that Jesus was anger. One of the biggest lies ever been told. 
and it justifies them holding on to anger, which is evil. Did you imagine that they will openly attack mailman? The mailman while delivering the mail like that? Openly doing it. Don't care about the camera being on them or anything. No police. And then if they do get caught, they just go walk in one door of the jail cell and out the door of the jail cell. That's in my country. I, I have told you in America, it's a Judeo-Christian country founded by white people, white men, white men. And with the help of God, they created the greatest country on this side of heaven, all in the name of Jesus. And they built some amazing things in this country. And I have said that white people, all they want is just a first-class life. Leave, they want you to leave them alone. Let them get their education and let them teach the next generation of their children to get an education and they just want a first-class life. They want a nice, clean, beautiful home in a nice, clean neighborhood. They want low crime. They want small government. They want to fly on the airplane first class so they have the Miles Plus plan. They want their universities to be nice and clean and big, made out of bricks. They want their white children to just be able to go to school, have fun, have a 3.5 grade point average, and that's a high enough average y'all want. 3.5? Oh, a higher. 4.0. What the? When I was in school, it was a 1.0. <laughs> we thought we were doing something with a 1.0. But they just want that. They want their kids to graduate and the girls to get married to a man that got money. And so the woman can stay home and raise the children and go over to the cafe mocha shop during the day, have some breakfast with their girlfriends, and they chat while the little children run around. They talk about how cute they are. They don't want to be robbed at the coffee shop. And they want the mailman to show up and deliver the mail, say hi, hi the kids. They don't want the mailman to be robbed along the way. They want to be able to go down to the corner and drop their mail in the mailbox and not think about someone going after them and, and breaking open the mailbox. They just want a first-class life. That's all they want. And they want to go down to the corner of church on Sundays and sing their quiet hymns. And go home have lunch, and start all over again. White people just want a first-class life. They don't want you coming into the suburbs and screwing up their lives. And I understand it. That's the way it should be. Here's an example of white people just wanting a first-class life. Watch this from TikTok. I said this before we bought the castle, and I can say it with a whole lot more authority now. If we wanted a turnkey castle, one that was already done, uh, we could have gotten that uh, for a lot less money than we're spending. But that's not what it was about. We weren't trying to like buy a castle and move into a castle. What we each wanted to do was find a castle. Make it come alive. And make it come alive. <laughs> there was a time when I was looking at castles, and I could have probably told you every castle that was out on the market and details about it. But I think we both knew this was a very special place. There is something about this spot that's peaceful, that's serene, that is just lovely. 
It's kind yeah. of a temple of peace, if you White want to call knife. it that way. I mean, it's really a, an amazing place. That's all they want. They want to build their castle. They don't want you coming in and building project hoods around it. They don't want you hanging out on the beach smoking pot. They don't want you coming over robbing them. They want to be able to walk down in that wood, those little woods behind them, and feel good about it. <laughs> but no, the people of color have to go in there and screw it up. And white people just want to have fun. They work hard at school. They work hard in colleges. They work hard on their job. They start businesses. They want to enjoy it. They don't feel like fighting with you. They don't feel like walking down the road and here you are coming up, knocking them out behind, from behind. They just want to have a life. And it used to be that way in this country. They had a life. I remember California when I moved here in 1968. Yes, there was a 1968. And I walked off the plane in, at the LAX airport. I saw the palm trees. I'm like, I'm in heaven. I just arrived to heaven. Clean, opportunities everywhere, jobs everywhere. I never imagined it could get to this. And I had planned, if I didn't live in L.A., I was going to live in Atlanta, Georgia, because at one time, white people, <clears throat> excuse me, white people controlled uh, Georgia. And Atlanta, Georgia was amazing. I literally thought I was going to live in Georgia because I grew up in that area down there in Alabama, two hours away from Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. But I moved out here, and I'm like, uh-uh, I'm staying here. I'm staying, I'm staying, I'm staying, and you're going to love me. <laughs> I ain't going nowhere, and you're going to love me. And I stayed in L.A., and it has been amazing up until now. I want my country back. 888-7753-773. Eric from Minnesota is a first-time caller. Eric, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Okay, so you know how you said like how Los Angeles used to be a good place before it all went to hell? Paradise on Earth. Yeah. It seems like that, like, it seems like when all the movie stars are all coming to Hollywood and stuff, it seems to have deteriorated from there. Even when, like, Kamala Harris and Gavin Newsom became governors. It was, like, good under, like, Ronald Reagan being the governor. Well, in the good old days, when the movie stars, when Hollywood was big, and Hollywood, the, the city up there, Hollywood, was nice, the movie stars helped to keep California beautiful because they were making movies here and they were they were, you would see them out and about that has changed over the years too yeah I could tell it really has changed because like because like Los Angeles was like you know like Los Angeles was known for like Hollywood where like they make the famous movies and now what is Los Angeles known for a bunch of gang activity violence yeah you name it yeah, I remember when Hollywood High School up there in Hollywood, I think it's between Sunset and Hollywood Boulevard, it was absolutely a beautiful school to go to, and it was predominantly white, and it was predominantly, I don't know about predominantly uh, entertainer children, but a lot of uh, entertainers' children were going to Hollywood High and it was an amazing school at the time. That has all changed too, and now they have destroyed that school. Yeah, yeah. San Francisco is no better. Right. Yeah. Because like, because like Los Angeles was already starting to go to hell when there's a bunch of blood and crip violence in Compton. So, 
with the violence adding on to like all like all the other stuff that goes on in uh, Los Angeles, it was already starting to make the city go downhill. But it still looked nice until like um, when. So like the blood and the Bloods and Crips gang war happened in like the 1980s and 1990s. Yeah, something like that. And then like, and then the, isn't that where LA started to go to hell? Um, I'm not sure. I don't know exactly when, but I do know it has changed, yeah. and and it really changed when it turned from red to blue, when they allowed the liberals, the Democratic government, when they allowed the Democrats to run the government here in California, it really went down hell really fast then. Yeah, like I remember I watched the uh, Gavin Newsom and Ron DeSantis debate on Fox News. Yeah. And then I just, and then like, how like Ron DeSantis showed the map of a uh, feces all over uh, San Francisco, and then like Gavin Newsom, he just didn't even seem to care. But, but like you know, San Francisco is all covered with feces. But like, let's say this: if I like, like, I think like someone from like China was like coming to San Francisco, and he was like, "Quick, quick, quick, clean up the city! Quick, 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 yeah. clean up the city!" <laughs> they took those people off the streets really fast. I don't know where they hit them probably in somebody else's community. And then as soon as the Chinese, the Chinese went back home, as soon as the Chinese went back home, uh, it went out of control. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate you, buddy. Super chat. Super, super. Super chat. Super chats. Kid Combo 1.0 donated a diamond on DLive. Jesse says Chinese women are causing empty Korea. This was yesterday. Empty what? Korea. Oh, I was reporting on the anchor baby story. Right. And and what if I remember correctly, it says something like that over in one of those places, China or Japan or somewhere. Right? One of those countries. Korea. Korea. Oh, South Korea. Yep. That the women are not having children, right? Yeah. And as a result of not having children, it's empty. That's right. What the? So that was reported. Check out the Anchor Maybe. You can podcast it and hear the full story. Thank you. Uh, Midnight Newton says, hey, you also skipped my coffee on JLP yesterday. <laughs> but that's not true because that's the one that I read about that he's an Uber Uber driver, he took a pilot to the airport. He talked about the last 29 years. He oh, would have yeah. never thought aviation would have been that bad. Right. So he said, oh, I missed it. Must have missed it. I'm black. You black. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Thank you. Joao, John in English, I'm Brazilian, bought a coffee about Jesus being God or the Son of God or both. Matthew 6, 15 to 17. He, Jesus, saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. There you go. Jesus said he was the Son. And like right on, Peter, you see it for yourself. He would have said, You know what, Peter? You were, I'm God. What the? He never said, I'm God. Wake up, Christian. Thank you. Fox News reported, an illegal who was allowed in just two weeks. I got to do what I come back. Hate news, not the fake news. Back in a moment. To responsibility. I write about how the spirit of anger was taken away from me 29 years ago. I forgave my mother who tried to turn me away from my father. And I returned to my father. And through him, my father on earth, and through him, I was able to return to God. No man or woman can return to God unless you go through the sun. And men are sons of God. They may be weak, pathetic examples of it, but it's the spiritual order of life. God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman, woman over children. So get from race to responsibility. I write about that. Go to my website, rebuildingtheman.com for an autographed copy or call 800-411-BOND. 
and donate to my nonprofit, Bond, the Brotherhood, Organization of a New Destiny. We are rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. An eclipse is on Monday, the eclipse, and a storm's uh, blowing through. An update on that Baltimore Bridge, evil Joe Biden going to Baltimore. No thanks. He's also uh, had a long phone call, 30-minute conversation with based BB Netanyahu. This is the end of hour one of the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. It is Get It Off Your Chest Friday, so you can call in right now during Hake News, Not Fake News to get on hold to get on air with JLP. 888-77-JESSE, J-E-S-S-E, no I in Jesse. 1-888-775-3773. An eclipse is on Monday the 8th of February. Of April, I do believe. Coming on, Sense Network CNN reports American cities on the path of Monday's solar eclipse are ramping up preparations for an influx of visitors. Thousands already on their way to areas with the best view as experts predict that the U.S. economy could receive a $1 billion boost, which is not that much, from eclipse tourism. Save your money, people. Save your money. Spend wisely. And a storm's a coming in. Widespread power outages have been reported in Maine and New Hampshire early today as a late-season nor'easter dumps heavy snow on parts of the northeast. The outages have impacted more than 400,000 homes and businesses, leaving many without heat in the frigid <laughs> conditions. Authorities advising people to avoid unnecessary travel in some areas as toppled trees and downed power lines have left many roads impassable. Already, snow accumulations in New England have exceeded a foot with, uh, that's 12 inches, with more town Vermont seeing a uh, whopping 24 inches of snow in less than three days. And uh, Chaplet, Maine, seeing around 21 inches of snow in April. Nice. And that Baltimore Bridge, no longer a bridge, CNN reports Crooked Joe Biden will visit Baltimore today, if he hasn't already, where he's scheduled to meet with some of the relatives of the six construction workers, many of them Hispanics, uh, immigrants, I don't know if they're illegals, maybe, who died in that collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. The uh, White House, black on the inside White House, previously said Crooked Joe would be meeting with local officials and viewing the wreckage of the bridge which collapsed last week after a massive cargo ship, uh, container ship, hit one of its support pillars. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers said Thursday they have plans. They plan to fully reopen the channel, to reopen the channel fully, leading the Baltimore port, leading to the Baltimore port, sorry, by the end of May. A significant update since the disaster halted vessels in the port critical to local and national economies. Clearing the channel will also allow for the continued search of the four construction workers' bodies believed to have been trapped by steel and concrete during the collapse, so said officials. An evil Joe versus based BB. Is he based? You tell me. CNN says, Crooked Joe Biden told Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin BB Netanyahu in a call on Thursday that the humanitarian situation in Gaza is, quote-unquote, unacceptable, and warned Israel to take steps to address the crisis or face consequences. The 30-minute conversation was the two leaders' first phone call since an Israeli airstrike killed seven aid workers from the World Central Kitchen in Gaza. Some people said it was an accident. Some people said it was on purpose. Netanyahu admitted that the Israeli military was to blame for the deaths and assured Biden his government would strive to prevent such a mistake from happening again. Hours later, uh, Israel approved reopening the Erez crossing into Gaza, closed since October 7th, that Hamas attack, uh, as well as the port of Ashdod to allow more aid into the enclave. And I heard that they fired a couple of people in the IDF. Maybe there's some rogue people in the Israeli defense forces. Who knows? 
Uh, is decaf coffee safe to drink? CNN says there's a controversy over a key chemical used to decaffeinate coffee. And so experts have weighed in. Maybe there's a disagreement. I'm James Hake. I'm back to JLP. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the second hour of the show already. It is Friday. There's two, there are two lines open. You can get involved by calling 888-775-3773. 888-77-JESSE. My biblical question for this week, what connects you with the physical world? What connects you with the physical world? An amazing question. It's a doozy. It is a doozy. You can listen to the show if you're out and about and can't watch it live as happening. You can listen live. You can podcast later and all that good stuff by calling the listen line on your iPhone or iPad at 641-793-1500. That's 641-793-1500. And to donate and have your comments read out loud, and we're going to finish up on them, uh, go to buymeacoffee.com. BuyMeACoffee.com slash JLP Talk. BuyMeACoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Uh, RebuildingTheMan.com. RebuildingTheMan.com. It's Friday. Every Friday is Get It Off Your Chest Day. Every Friday is Express Yourself Friday. You calm like a mug. You need to go to go to go to go and get yourself bleached because everything you say about black people and you're sitting up there looking like a tar baby. Uh, it might sound like a semantics argument, but he's a great alien. Ah! I wonder if he's been smoking pot. So he is joining us today to talk about diversity <laughs> and why it matters. Yeah, but then who runs the ship? <laughs> so a group of suspected migrants are under arrest this morning after they were discovered squatting in a home where guns and drugs were found, but that's not all. He said, quote, a suspicion of mine is that there are too many preachy females. Recently, they tell me they don't like me to talk about race. Well, I'm going to talk <laughs> about it anyway. I bet you are. I do that with freedom. All I care about is freedom. I see so much greatness in this city that has so many great African-American leaders. Uh, we know what they want to say, uh, but they don't have the courage to say the N-word. <laughs> and what they mean by DI, in my opinion, is duly elected incumbent. Truth is, it's some challenges that come to being black. Who's driving this boat? <laughs> <laughs> what the? 888-7753-773. I'm going to take a couple calls, then super chats and all that good stuff. Let me go to Larry out of Georgia. Georgia, on my mind. Larry, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hello? Uh, you're on the air, Larry. It, it, it's, it's, it's Jerry. Oh, out of Georgia. Hold on, Jerry. You got a lot of noise in the background. Don't hang up. I'll let Sean uh, straighten it out with you, and I'll come back to you. Da uh, Daniel out of Georgia again. 
Georgia. Oh, my, my. Hey, uh, Daniel, welcome to the show. Good morning. How you doing? All is well. Okay, um, I wanted to ask you, um, what do you think about um, when Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am? He's always been around. All right, that's what, I, that's what I believe, too, because he told, or, or when God made the covenant with him, he said that through his people, that he would that he would send the Savior to save us from sin. Yes. And then on top of that, um, I don't know if people know this, but in Matthew 1, like the first chapter, it explains who Joseph and his forefathers were related to, and he was related to Seth, who was the son of Adam. I don't know if people, like, read into it. I mean, not read into it, but know about that. Because I, I, I noticed that before, but I didn't understand what it meant. Well, anyone that reads the Bible and try to interpret what it means, they're into their intellect. And the devil is uh, uh, interpreting the Bible for them, and they think that that's what it means. So they get stuck in the intellect and never get to simplicity and understanding at all. Not all, but most. Right. What did you What did you think? Um, you know, when they had um, they they wanted Trump to pay um half a half a billion. Was it half a billion? Yeah, half a billion. And then they lowered it to um 175 million. Yes. People, I don't, I don't know. When I, I, I looked at um MSNBC and the people that just just say the craziest things. <laughs> They compared they compared to half a billion to like five thousand dollars. <laughs> well, they just... hate they hate Donald Trump because Donald Trump is a free thinking, independent person, and Donald Trump understands how to deal with evil. Uh, he's mm-hmm. awake, appears to be awake to deal with evil, and they are ticked uh, that they can't stop him. Because normally uh, a one-man band like Donald Trump, had they had that attack on them, they would have given up a long time ago. And especially since Donald Trump doesn't have to be in government, he's doing it because he loved the country. And, and normally most people can't handle that kind of pressure. The average person can't handle any pressure, to be honest, but they have never seen a man like Donald Trump. They don't know what to do with him. Right. I talked to my friend about it. He was like, they just don't care. They just want them out. Right. They just, their hearts are wicked. They don't care about the country. They don't care about the country. They don't care about the family. They don't care about anything but themselves. They want them out at any cost. It doesn't matter. Right. And then if he does, even if he did pay the where where is that money going to? Good question. Amazing question. Was, thank God he didn't have to do it. And uh, he ended up paying the however million they said, and he's still moving forward. It's amazing to see it. And that's why I tell people all the time, have a little space between you and Donald Trump and all people so you can learn, you can see what's going on. And it would be amazing what you realize when you're able to see. Right. And the Eighth, the eighth Amendment supports that. I, I, I was, yeah, it supports that. They said it, it's... It's excessive. That's really excessive. I don't. They say that nobody has ever paid that much. No, ever. it's the first time. Isn't that amazing? Right. Because they hate him. He's white. He's male. He's a Christian. He's independent. He owned. He I got agree. more money than Jesus. They hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, thanks for your call, buddy. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks All right. so much for the time. You're welcome, buddy. Let me try. There's one line open. Let me try Jerry again uh, out of Georgia. Jerry, let's try it again. Go ahead. Can you hear me, Jesse? I hear you. Hey, I uh, just wanted to uh, get off my chest. Uh, I appreciate you taking my call. Yes, just sir. wanted to, you know, take five minutes of your time. Um, yesterday, you were speaking about the intellect, <laughs> and you were saying how to just be dumb. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And I uh, I know I'm going off track, but then, you know, you, you, you look at, you know, like shows, like, you know, they put truth in movies and shows, you know? And I looked at like, you know, like SpongeBob, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and then you look at, uh, you look at Squidward 
And Squidward was kind of like intellectual, you know what I mean? He kind of was always upset and always mad and didn't really enjoy life. But you look at SpongeBob and he might have seemed dumb, but, you know, he kind of had common sense. And he kind of enjoyed life, if you get what I'm saying. I do. The, the, so that, that, the most happiest people on earth are the dumbest ones because they yeah, just simply it, live a simple daily life and they have perfect peace. Right. So I, I feel like we all just need to, you know, uh, just kind of just be SpongeBob, kind of just, just live and kind of just be and don't try to get so caught in being smart. I, I don't know why people are so caught up on trying to be smart and they think that people that have common sense are dumb. Right. That I'm just getting it off my chest. Um, also, I just <laughs> want to speak on. I want to speak on Christians because you know I I grew up in a Christian home. I'm at Christian church, and um, there's a lot of things I don't uh, agree with. But I just kind of find it funny how they're so quick to judge. Uh, you know the non-Christians, and like you say that I agree, they're 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 they're, they're not different at all. They're no different than the non-Christians. Right. And I, I and they judge. You know. I, I, I like listening to you because you don't judge like the gay people or the transgender. You just speak facts about it, speak truth on it. Yes. But it seems to me like they judge, like they like Christians, not 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 the bad, not the good ones. I'm saying like the the bad Christians, they're bullies. Like yeah. they bully people, they they bully the transgender, they bully the gays, and and not even knowing that they're playing God as well. Yeah. And I try not to judge because Jesse, I don't know their story. You know, you don't know somebody's story like most most guys that are like that you know either they've been traumatized or they grew up with their, their you know their mother in, a, in yeah. the home and they have to uh, they have to overcome their mother and it's like christians don't see that what they'll do is they'll they'll go out on the streets or they'll and they'll bully them and say you're going to hell you're going to hell and they and the christians are also living in hell they're already so like, in hell the christian in hell already, trying to draw somebody in hell with them and it makes sense because they get a they now it makes sense you get a, they get an ego thrill yeah. out of telling other people oh you're going to hell that's why I just the, it's the ego it Jesse when you really wake up it makes a lot of sense to what you're saying because the worst people to hang around with are Christians they're soup not I'm not saying all not all not all not all not all but most <laughs> they're super judgy yeah one hundred percent they're just super judgy also last I don't want to talk too long last about thoughts. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a driver, so I, I have a lot of time to kind of just like be in my thoughts and I don't know how to kind of like not think and not have thoughts because I feel like me thinking and me having thoughts is what woke me up to truth. Uh, I feel like me seeking it and me having my thoughts. And that's why it's kind of hard for me not to, I'm a little bit over an overthinker and I'm trying to not overthink and kind of just be. But I feel like, Jesse, when I overthink, it's like it'd be the truth. You know what I'm saying? I don't forgive my mom. I don't, you know, I forgave my mom and everything. And I feel like I'm on the path of trying to work on myself. I called you a while ago, but never asked him like a minute. Remember, but I'm trying to I'm trying to work on myself. I really am trying to work on myself spiritually and kind of just be. But as I'm driving, I just have thoughts and I'm thinking and I'm overthinking and, I'm, and I hate it. You know what I'm saying? I do. But don't, all you need to do is be aware of the thinking. Be a, You are looking at the thoughts. Be aware of that. Right. And don't hate it or love it. Just see it. And seeing it, God, you're slowing them down. The, the right. light of God slowing down the darkness, the thoughts. And then he will take them away from you. But don't hate it. Don't love mm -hmm. it. Don't have any opinion of it. Don't call it you. Don't call them your thinking. All you need to do is be aware, and that's it. So when you're driving and you're having buku thoughts, just see that you're having buku thoughts. Don't conversate with them. Don't do anything but watch them. Okay. One last thing. Uh, so on my, because uh, I know it's a narrow path. So of what I'm knowing and what I'm learning, do I just keep it to myself? Yes. And just like, don't try to. And just let it just and like if if it just come my way if somebody wanted to ask, uh, then then I if they then I tell them the truth if they want to know truth kind of just keep it to myself because you know they say spread the gospel but I I don't know I just feel like it's kind of weird because a lot of church people like harass people 
and they like try to like come at you and try to force you to like yeah. like it's weird, you know what I'm saying? Like I I've, I've been harassed in the store where I've had people like kind of like eye me down because they're trying to be like, hey, you want to come to the church? And it's like it's it, it, it's weird. Um, yeah, you don't don't go out <laughs> preaching and don't go out forcing it in, on anyone if they if they uh if if they ask you you tell them and then if right. they don't use what you tell don't tell them anymore leave them in their hell right. and then what's going to happen is that God is going to take complete control of you just as the right. devil has had complete control of you the, the God is chasing the devil out of your mind and emotion and he's taking over you and he will use you. He will tell you when to speak and when not. You will see when to and when not to. And you will mm-hmm. never force it on anyone. And you'll become the light and, and you'll be fine. You're right. Because you, like you say, God lets people live in their hell. And once I think like that, it makes me just kind of be kind of free because I'm like, I can't play God. There's nothing I can really do. It's no. kind of like people have to personally wake up like they have to like how I, like how i'm waking up how i have to seek and actually want truth yes. some that person has to seek it for themselves and it's just crazy i know i'm talking a lot i'm right now. i'm just it's just crazy how you you, you kind of like really spiritually wake up it's kind of like you can't really explain it you know what i'm saying right you can't, you can't. You can't really physically you can't physically see anything but you it's it's, <laughs> it's weird jesse i can't even really it's like you know that song. I can see clearly now. Yeah. Right? It's like, it's like man. I'm and I'm I'm 26. You know what I'm saying? So I, I I'm I, I'm just blessed to be able to see that. And it's worth more than anything under the world. Cars, money. It's like once you see, you are in the one percent. You are in the one percent of the of the world population <laughs> of really seeing it. Yeah, I didn't so know. You, I didn't know that. You can really see in a different way until I asked God to let me see what was wrong with me, why I was so angry and mm-hmm. emotional, right? And he allowed mm-hmm. me to see I resented my mother. But And once that, I forgave her, I, I woke up. And I'm like, I didn't even know. Mm-hmm. I didn't know I was asleep. I didn't know that I couldn't <laughs> see. I was seeing with my physical eyes, but right. I didn't know that I couldn't see until I was able to see. And I'm like, what the... Well, you know, it's like that show, uh, Walking Dead. It's like, you know, it's like it's just people that are like they're working, they're alive, they're walking, but they just don't know. Right. And so it is kind of like a reference of like, uh, yeah, kind of kind of like the Walking Dead. But I think I think everybody goes through something traumatic or something bad oh, to kind of like to kind of like. And I think God uses that to kind of because to me, it took it took me and my girl to break up. You know what I'm saying? For me to be like to sit down alone, I had to sit alone and really kind of like, be like, man, I'm really tripping and depressed over this girl. What's what? I started asking myself, what's wrong with me? Why am I tripping <laughs> over this one? And then it, it was like a, it was like a smack in the face. Like it was yeah. like, Oh, Oh, I know who I am now. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? I do. It's, I can't, I, it's crazy, but thank you, Jesse, for giving me, you know, the time to talk to you. I talked to you in the past, but I'll, uh, I'm continuing to work on myself. Absolutely. Um, and when you're driving, don't overreact to those thoughts. All right. Just watch <sighs> them. Don't overreact. Because that's what the enemy inside your imagination, he wants you to overreact. That's how you stay alive. Do not it's overreact. It's hard not to, though, man. I drive. I drive, and it's like, it's hard not to because I'm, like, just driving, and I'm, I'm by myself. It's like, <sighs> but when I don't overthink, Jesse, I feel like I'm unstoppable. Like, when I'm right. moving through life and I, and I don't think, I just, I just do. Sometimes I have glimpses or I have days, Jesse, where I don't think at all. I just yeah. do, and I'd be like, if I can just do that and not think, not, and I don't understand why he says don't put your thoughts in captivity. I didn't understand it, but I do. Because when you put them thoughts in captivity, you're already immortal. People keep saying, oh, you're eternal. You, have, you can have eternal spiritually already right now. 100%. Absolutely. Amazing, man. Well, stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. Don't hate the thoughts. Don't be mad about anything. Just watch them. That's all is required is for you to be conscious and watch the thought. Nothing else is required. And they will be taken care of for you by the Spirit of God. Awesome. All right. Amazing. Call me again, man. Amazing talk. 
All right, thank you. All right, bud. Amazing. Uh, one and two. There's a line open. 888-7753. Super chat. Super chat. Super chats. Thank you, Joao, for that coffee about Jesus. Matthew 16, 15 to 17, about uh, Peter, what Peter discovered. Thank you. Andrew bought a coffee. Hey, Jesse, I noticed that a lot of my questions have that I have through the weeks get answered simply by listening to your radio show or church service. Amazing. Right on. Someone, Thank you. Someone will ask a similar question I have, the, I have, and boom, you answer it. It's kind of mind-blowing. Nothing it, new under the sun. Is that God or just coincidence that my questions are being answered at the proper timing? It's definitely God. It's not coincidental at all. Amazing. Thank you. Andrew bought a coffee. Amazing biblical question this week. I wanted to try and take a jab at it. What connects you with the physical world? Feelings are what connects us to the physical world. He says us. <laughs> like, a, uh, like an addict, we chase good feelings. We chase good feelings that we get from drugs, lust, friends, family, work, etc. When the supply runs out, we we crash and are in Who bad. Who are you referring to? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> maybe him, him and me <laughs> <laughs> are in bad feelings, not knowing they are different sides of the same hell. I think those who can see but want to stay in their hell love the good feelings too much to let go. Who are you talking about there? Those. Who can see but want to stay in their hell is who uh, he's talking about. <laughs> Whom? Thank you. I appreciate it. I put my little two cents in on Sunday. Amazing. Thank you. Andrew bought a coffee. What does the great white hope have to say today? God bless you and the crew. Let me check and see. Strong arm emoji. Thanks emoji. Waving hands emoji. <laughs> Fox and friends in the morning. They're very honorable people. Amazing. Thank you. Alex bought five coffees. Raymond is the man. Why is he always so down about himself? I don't know. Raymond's been doing that for a long time. I try to encourage him not to do that. He's getting better, though. Yeah? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's Thank just you. a nice thing to say. Yeah. <laughs> it's Ch a mama thing to say. Ch yeah. <laughs> Chalice donated on Cash App a bond JLP on Cash App saying thanks. Thank you. Chill and lean on buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Hi, Jesse and crew. I would like to answer the BQ. What connects you with the physical world? My thoughts, emotions, and beliefs, a.k.a. my ego or false me, connect me to the physical world. Amazing. I'll put my two cents in on Sunday. Thank you. Charlotte bought a coffee. Life lesson. There are no fat 90-year-olds. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I, and I've really been trying to reflect to see if I knew... I knew one fat girl in high school, but I, as far as I can remember... Now, I may think of somebody at the time because it's been a while since I've been in school, but growing up, I knew no fat people in Alabama. I just can't think of any. And I didn't realize how much... Now, I knew one fat girl in school, right, but... Fat wasn't popular at all when I was growing up. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing fat wasn't popular when I was growing up? Yeah. It, it, it just wasn't around. It was growing when I was, <laughs> when I was in school, and then it went out of control after, I think. It's out of control now. Yeah. They even have fat people on TV doing commercials, dancing. Yeah. Fat people dancing. True. Oh, I wanted, what was that story I about to read and I went to break? Oh. Want me to oh, read it? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, ha I put a couple of screenshots in the main tra James transfer folder, FYI. Fox News, an illegal who was allowed in to the country just two weeks ago, allegedly admitted, walked into the police station an hour and a half after this incident, to stabbing his 26-year-old wife to death, nearly decapitating her, in front of his two children, their two children after an argument in their Chicago suburb apartment. Amazing. Yeah. Um, on American soil. Yep. What a mess. That Thank was, you, Joe Biden. That was trending on Twitter. He was uh, caught. I mean, he... What, what, was, what did they say? Perez Estrada... Oh, no. Perez Estrada. Baltimore... Per, Baltazar Perez Estrada... 
He crossed into the U.S. from Mexico illegally. He was charged with alien in- inadmissibility, given a future court date, and allowed to continue right on into the United States his way. And he went all the way up to the, sh- to the Chicago suburb of Carroll Stream, Chicago. I mean, Carroll Stream, Carroll Stream, Illinois. Amazing. Terrible. They don't care about Americans. Got into a verbal fight with his wife about 10 p.m., and it got out of control, and he st- stabbed her like a dozen times in different places. Head, neck, body, hands. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, okay. What's that? Go ahead. Donnie. Super okay. Guess who is streaming for you on Twitch? Says, hi, Jesse. Keep up your good work. Cheers from Portugal. Thank you. Amazing. We're on Twitch. Yep. JLP Talk on Twitch. That's the guy who... That, that were accused. Yeah, he walked. Well, he allegedly. walked into the. He walked into the police precinct, according to reports, and right. said, "I stabbed my wife." Amazing. Midnight Newton bought a coffee. Hey, I apologize for thinking you missed my super chat on Wednesday. What do you get if you're Uber driver? If you're an Uber driver and have to pick up three black women at the mall's food court, screaming affirmative action. <laughs> Cops get called. One gets detained. The second tries to run, and the third tries. Try to steal my stuff. What a mess. <laughs> what a mess. Be careful over there. Thank you, I'm telling you. What the? Nah. It's hard on there, out there for an Uber driver. <laughs> Aries having to deal with black women. Uh, Aries' son bought three coffees. If you're busy cohabitating with a man you hate slash love because he pays for all your bills, beta, and you're slowly destroying him for the thrill of it, you can podcast the JLP shows or listen to the (laughs) listen line by calling 641-793-1500. That's 641-793-1500. What? Thank you. Amazing. Thank you, Aries. son. Lucille P., three coffees. Biblical question answer. What connects you with the physical world? Our thoughts connect us to the physical world. Hugging, em- hug emoji. Oh, Smile. amazing. Thank you. I'll put my two cents in on Sunday. A couple diamonds, no message from Aries 1. Thank you. Kid Combo 1.0 with the diamond. But how are the aliens affecting, affecting you, Jesse? Tear emoji. Okay emoji. Misty. Crime. High tech. We're spending money on them. Uh, they're taking jobs. All kind of ways. Thank you. WD-41 with a few diamonds. No message. Thank you. Thank you. Hold there. Okay. I will get some calls in. Thank you all so much. We're going to pick up. I need to get some calls in, and then we get back to the super chest. Thank you all so much. Let me go to C- Cooper out of Wisconsin. Cooper, welcome to the show. You're on the air. What's up, Jesse? All is well. Uh, that's good. A little louder, Cooper. Oh, sorry. So I'm here to uh, talk to you about Jesus being God, because I know that you believe that he's just the son of God, but he's not God, right? He is the son, yes. Yeah, he's the son. But that's inherently wrong in the Catholic belief, because we believe that he is God. Are you Catholic? And the Father and the Spirit are God. Yeah, I'm Catholic. And you believe that Jesus is God? Yes. And the Father's what now? The Father's also God. And why do you believe Jesus is God? Because it's stated in the Bible. Where? John twenty twenty eight. What does it say? Uh, Thomas. Uh, Jesus, Jesus shows up to the apostles, and Thomas calls him his Lord and his God. That's what Thomas called him, but Jesus never called himself that. Well, yeah, but Jesus when did didn't Jesus? Deny it. When did Jesus say he was God? He doesn't need to. He shows it by his actions. What do you mean? He forgives sins, and that's something that only only God can do. So you believe, but he said that God gives him to, he said, my father give me the authority to judge or forgive. That authority came from his father, not from him. Oh, yeah, because the father and the son respect each other. You can see in the Bible also that the father. But you uh, said, you said, oh, yeah, the father respect. But he said, my father gives me the authority to do that. If he were God. Why would he need his father to give him the authority? He doesn't, uh, well, he does He does need it. It's like a, they're inseparable. They need each other. So it's inseparable. Like the, the father, 
Now would you father can't me, do anything without the son. But if he's God, why would he need? It doesn't. Just think about it, Coop. He's God. He wouldn't be calling some other guy his father. And my father sent me, and my father well, gave me information. It's not another guy. It's the and, same guy. What? Hold on, buddy. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I understand. Let me take a quick break. Back in a moment. We have a counseling service, and I have to admit, thanks to God, it is the best counseling service on this side of heaven. I counsel with men and women, families, individuals around the world. Most people are unhappy. They're miserable. They have rough lives. They're depressed, suicidal, young and old of all races. I understand. I know why, and I do understand it. Because exactly what's happening in me is happening with everybody outside of me, inside of them. And I've noticed that with those who really, really, really want to understand, they overcome it just like that. Out of one counseling session. If you need counseling, you can go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-2663. 800-411-BOND. Best counseling service on this side of heaven. Check out our merch at rebuildingtheman.com slash store. Rebuildingtheman.com slash store. The Father State is there. All kind of amazing stuff. Uh, our merch. Also, uh, for personal shout outs, personal shout outs, birthdays, weddings, anniversaries, or whatever, go to um, Cameo, C A M E O dot com. Slash Jesse Lee Peterson, C A M E O dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson for personal shout out. So I got this text from my uh, good buddy of mine about fat people. And I said that I didn't see fat people growing up, right? And he said that there was only one fat person that I remember in junior high school. We had to run tracks three times a week including the mile run. And we were so proud of him that he ran each week until he finished. Now, I don't think we can see that happening today. And you're right, they don't. The kids don't exercise. That's a good point because we exercise every day at school. Run track exercise, all kind of stuff, every day. We'll call PE. <laughs> Interesting point. Maybe that's why I know fat people were around. 888-775-3773. Let me go back to Cooper out of Wisconsin. And Cooper believed that Jesus is God. He mentioned Thomas. And Thomas said, my Lord, my God. And that's not obvious that Thomas is calling Jesus God. God, and plus Jesus never called himself God. Thomas, what good has it done you to believe that Jesus is God? Well, it's bringing me uh, internal peace, you know. Yeah, you know, per you have perfect my peace. My Lord and my Savior. You have perfect peace? Oh, yeah, I got perfect peace. Well, uh -huh. not perfect peace. Life is still stressful, and I'm 16. Oh, but you're 16? I'm through. I'm, yeah. Why are you stressful Believing that Jesus is God, why do you why are you still stressful? Because I'm still made of flesh. What that mean? So I'm still of the flesh. If I was of the spirit, like if I was a perfect Christian, uh -huh. along with uh, along with everything that the Bible says, because the Bible directly aligns with the Catholic belief uh, from my studying and from other studying that I trust. 
Can you so if believe? I, if I was directly aligned with that, then I'd be, yeah, I'd be perfectly in peace. Yeah. So why are you dire- directly in line with believing that Jesus is God? Well, because it's proven to me. And how so is you're it, just going to... How is it proven? You're going to deny that. How is uh, it proven? Well, I already read, I already read you the verse. So no, you're you just read that, uh, me somebody else's word from a Bible, but how is it proven? It's in the Bible. Hey, let, me, let me go. Let me how go is here. it proven? So you read the verse, John twenty twenty eight, where Thomas called Jesus God. You're telling me that that's not him calling him God, and that's not Jesus being God. That's not Jesus calling. That's not Jesus calling himself God. Why does he need to call himself God? If he was God, why did he need to talk about his father? Why did he need to talk about his father if he were God? Because the father is God. Uh, so Jesus is your father? Sorry, what? Jesus is your father? He's creator of heaven and earth, yeah. But is, he's he, not like... is Jesus your father? Okay. Thomas, I appreciate your call. It's not Bible Thumping Thursday, but I did want to talk to you about it a little bit. Thank you, buddy. All right. Wait, can I talk to you about something? No, I got to run. Thank you, buddy. Let me go to Denzel. Call me on Bible Thumping Thursday, Thomas. Let me go to Denzel out of uh, Illinois. Denzel, welcome to the show. You're on the air. How you doing, Jesse? All is well. Hey, this is the third time he's calling. Um... I yeah, just wanted to let you know pretty much the situation is going on right now. Um, overcame my parents. My girlfriend also overcame her parents. Um, you said we would understand I, kind of what I would need to do going forward. Um, and, yeah, so she's, we're now sleeping. And she's living in the living room. I'm sleeping in the bed. Um, and she's finding a uh, apartment so that we can go ahead and move out and do it the right way. Have you called me about um, this before already? Yes, I mean we talked about it, uh, not this specifically, uh-huh. but um, we were doing it in increments. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, so um, just a couple questions about kind of like where to go from here in terms of uh, her moving out, and then like you said that once I overcome my mom, the spirit I would no longer be attracted to that spirit. But she no longer has that spirit. Can can you like give me some more insight about like? how that dynamic works. How old are you? I'm 27. And how old is she? She's 19. Oh, did your girlfriend call me too? No. Oh, and you said, how do you know she no longer has that spirit? You said I would no longer be attracted to that spirit. Right. And you said she no longer has it, right? Right, because she overcame her, her mother. So we're doing it the right way. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And your question is what? My question is, um, since she no longer has that spirit in her, well, how would I know that? Because once I overcame my mom, I no longer feel the same way I felt before, but it's it's not an emotional high anymore. Right. So, like, how would I know if what will work? Do you see what I'm saying? Because, like, everything is different now, so... I'm trying to relearn myself and, like, kind of what I like, I guess. But how would I know? Will it be the same attraction as before uh, I woke up? How will you know what? How would I know that I'm attracted to somebody? Will it be the same feeling? Because I know feelings are from the devil. So you want to know how will you know if you're still attracted to your girlfriend, your now girlfriend? Mm -hmm. Not even, not even girlfriend. I'm just talking about in general. So, like, since I woke up, usually, I guess it was. I don't want to say it was lust, it but was like, lust. how would I? Okay, so how would I know? Because if if emotions are the devil, how would I know? If I'm, is it going to be the same? Like, kind of like feeling. Like, how would I know? Like, it's it's. I'm pretty much emotionless now, so like it's kind of hard to even <laughs> tell if um attracted to somebody like how what indications would i know like oh this is the person i should pursue like do i even pursue women anymore or because i have peace so it's like it's super duper confusing on like the next step when it comes to uh just dating in general 
um, you would know. So, so, so you want to know how would you know if you uh, uh, attracted to women, dating them, and feeling this stuff, right? Right. Uh, you're not. You're not going to feel it anymore, and that's one of the issues about waking up. And most people end up getting involved before they wake up because you once you wake up you do lose all that emotion which is not love it's all hell the so it is all about sex it's never about love people don't love one another when they get together it's a, it's about hate but once you do wake up because that anger is what awaken your sexual nature and all that kind of stuff but once you wake up you overcome that and what i recommend is you not even think about dating or anything at this point. You only think about, you all, you all the focus is to completely wake up. And then life will happen naturally. And if it's meant for you to get married, have children, make children, it's going to happen naturally without you thinking about it. it. It's like everything would just happen on its own. And when you, if you get married, you'll be married and you won't be needing her for love or anything like that. And if she want to stay fine, if she doesn't fine, uh, you won't have a problem with it because your love will come from f the Father God and it will be fine. So don't worry about that. Don't think about that at all. Don't even look for anything but what is right. Okay. And, and it will happen naturally if it's meant to be. Okay, so... Okay, so just keep up with the silent prayers and then just don't worry about kind of the dating aspect of anything. And No. I mean, just keep it in, in perfect peace because it's, it's a weird feeling to live without anger because I, I didn't know I had so much of it. Yeah. Um, and then when it got lifted off of me, I just, like, had to relearn, like, how to live. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. It's completely weird, so. But, uh, okay. No, don't think about that. And, and you, you're still going to end up going on dates sometimes. It's just going to happen. And then when you go on dates now, you won't put on a pretense. You won't try okay. to be nice to the girl or me. You won't try to do a lot of grinning or anything to satisfy her. You will not feel uncomfortable. You would totally be you. And if she doesn't like it, fine. If she does, fine. It will happen naturally. Okay. And if okay. you don't date for a while, it'll be fine, too, because you have everything you're looking for. There's nothing to look for. You know what I mean? Right. So, okay, so in terms, and then same thing versus her as well, because, I mean, you know, regardless of the situation, I want to make sure she's in a good mental head space, and all she has to do is keep up with the silent prayers, and it's, it's the same thing with her, right? It's the same identical thing. Is she, okay. is she, so she is working on herself? Yes. And why so. why is she working on herself? Uh, she has to overcome her mother. Well, I mean, we had a conversation um, in terms of like, because I wanted the traditional family. So like my whole goal was to like make sure I had the right woman, cook, clean, um, you know, I, I stay at home and I work. Um, and then... You know, I pay the bills and she does everything else in the house. And then I realized, like, I don't have, we don't, I don't have kids right now. So, like, she worked part time. And I'm just like, you know, when you wake up, you start to see a little clear. And it's just like, well, you don't have kids. You need to be, like, doing stuff. You're still young. Yeah. Um, I was just trying to step myself up by the age I because I wanted to get married by 30. And then by that time, she'll be 22. So it, it just made sense to me at that time. But then, like, didn't realize that, like, I was spoiling her too much, and she wasn't growing at all. So, um, so yeah, so when I woke up, I kind of saw that clear. So that's kind of where to go from here. But I want to make sure she's, I mean, she's she's up, up. Like, she, we got off of birth control and everything. So, like, it, it like even when she got off of that, her whole life changed, too. So I just want to make sure that I'm giving her the right advice, and then, um, yeah, I just want everybody to be good at the end of the day. So. She, um, um, oh, good, man. That's good for her. So when you woke up, you woke up before she did, right? When you became aware. You, you told, we had a conversation Friday, and then Saturday, 
I went to go uh, overcome my mom, and then when I, I picked her up from work, and she went to go overcome her mom. So it was the same day. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Well, good, man. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. And don't think about the future because it's an illusion. There is no future. Don't think about the past. It is an illusion. There is no past. <clears throat> you well, just practice well, staying present. Okay. Um, yeah, keep it in my mind and my body. I watched that, that the episode. One more question. Okay. So, if I, so like, if you were to ever, I'm sure that it's going to come again. Do I let that pass? Like, as yes. a dude, how do you initiate? You said this happened naturally. So, you okay. said if, if, if what should come again? Because I can watch my feelings now. So, like, I can literally let them pass. So, right. I, like, as a dude, like, we have a job to, like, initiate. So, like, how would I know to initiate if I let every feeling pass? Initiate what? Just anything. Like, doing the right thing in terms of, like, your work. I know, like, practical thoughts or, like, uh, even, like, the, the data aspect for me and my girlfriend. Like, how would you, you – you already answered that question. But um, it is weird to see if, like, if I let feelings pass that – you know, as a dude specifically, you're supposed to go up to women and like when, even with the dating thing. Because if I let it pass, I will never talk to nobody. <laughs> Does that make sense? If, or, if uh-huh. you let the feeling pass, you won't be talking to anyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning that you won't go up and talk to a girl. Right. Oh, I see. Uh, in all honesty, and in real reality. You're not supposed to chase girls. They're supposed to chase you. Okay. Because because women are looking for, they're looking for a man that would bring them out of their hell. They're looking for a father's love. And they're always testing men. And and so when they test you and they find you unwanted, that makes them want you. And when they want you, now that you're waking up, you'll be able to point them out of their hell if they want to come out of it. Or if they don't want to come out of it, they'll go and find another weak man. Oh, okay. I get you. So they're all demons. I just got, now I know how to tame them. Is essentially what you're saying. I'm sorry? They're all demons in terms of like now. Like speak I speak into, gonna, your, speak into your phone. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Go ahead. So they're going to pursue the pursue me and then they find a light and then either... They're going to run like it's garlic or be enticed and overcome. 100%. Got you. Okay, cool. That gives me so much more clarity about the situation. <laughs> 100%. And, and Thank all you, the only reason guys chase women because they hate their mothers. So they have that woman's nature, the mindset, and emotions. And they're looking for love from the, the mama, the woman who is mama. They're looking for love. And then when they get sex, they find out that it wasn't love. And that's when the hell starts. But Got you. It's the other way around. The women are supposed to chase the man. And as long as you live that way, you'll be fine. Okay, cool. I mean, that one really won't be an issue. Okay, cool. Thank you, Jesse. You're welcome. Um, and stay with it. Stay with it. You haven't seen anything, man. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. All right. Thanks, man. Your girlfriend is okay about moving out? Yeah. I mean, I told she she's um yeah she's super no arguments whatsoever. She was a little um emotional, but she tried to hide it a little bit in terms of like you know. And then like when we did have a conversation, when she did get emotional, she calmed down really quick. Nice. Uh, she was like, "That's not me. Um, I'm right. sorry." Like you could see it in her face; she'll be crying, but like her voice would be normal. So she really knew that it wasn't her, and then we kind of laughed about it. Um, and yeah, I think she's getting a little bit more excited about moving out. Um, I told her that, you know, like us living together, um, in terms of especially being traditional, uh, she's super duper conservative. I'm super duper conservative and we thought we were doing the right thing. Um, and then she wake up, you realize you weren't, um, we messed up on the wedlock part. So she moved in cause her mom was trying to create her and her image and her image was not good at all. So I thought I was being, a uh, uh, a, a good guy by having her move in um, and then giving her a better life, but didn't realize that we were both using each other. Yeah. So we both realized that and we're making adjustments. 
amazing. Um, Joel made the point that if she's not wanting you, she ain't the one. So you know now. You definitely know. And uh, again, just stay with it and watch and stay with it and watch. And I wish you both well, man. And tell her that when the, if the devil tell her, and he will, oh, he just want to leave you because he want another woman. He want to date other women and stuff. Tell her not to believe that either. Just let that pass as well. Okay. I just put the uh, phone to her ear. She heard that. Oh, she did? Nice. But yeah. amazing, man. I wish you guys well. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. You're changing lives out here for real. Love you, man. Love you, too. Stay with it, all right? And Tara Hurd, right, stay man. with it. Stay with the prayer. And stay watching. Oh, this is what I want to tell you. Then I got to run. Uh, you okay. said that you are a super conservative, right? I wouldn't say super conservative. I am a, I'm not a liberal. so Right. Yeah. So here's what I want. I know what you mean by that when you say you're conservative. Don't call yourself that anymore either. Okay. You know, you're going to vote conservatively, whatever. You're going to vote the right way. But don't call yourself conservative. Don't call yourself Christian. Don't call yourself anything so that all identities can disappear. Okay. You only want, now, if, you know, you, let's say you're having a conversation. You could say, well, yeah, I'm a Christian, but don't identify as being a Christian in yourself. But you got to communicate, right? So you right. can consciously say that I'm a Christian, but you won't identify with it then. But if you unconsciously say you're a Christian, you're going to get a false identity from being a Christian, and it's not going to work for you. Okay. Yeah, I went to church, and then they were hooping and hollering, and people were on the phone. And I only went once after I woke up. I was like, this is stupid. Nobody's healed. And I left. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's what's wrong with the, one of the things that are wrong with the Christians. They identify, they take Christianity as an identify, as an identity, and they never discover the identity of God. Because now they have picked up the Christianity thing, and they think that they have picked up God, and they have not. Right. Amazing. I, had, um, I called in yesterday. I know it was Bible, Bible Thumper yesterday, but I did have one question about a verse. Okay. Um, I don't have the verse on me, but it was uh, it was John, I think, like, 449 or something like that. It's like, once you see, um, if you claim you can see, then you will be guilty. Can you, like, expand on that a little bit? If you claim you can see, you would be guilty? Yes. Um, I don't know what he meant, but the one thing I do know, and again, I don't know about that verse because I, I, I'm not familiar. You familiar with Hake? What did he say? It was John what? John 4, 49, something like that. Uh, I don't have the Bible in front of me right now. Well, Hake going to pull it up right now real fast. Um, it sounds interesting. Hake, I mean, John 40. No, that's not it. What is, I don't know what he said. What, what was it? He said, if you claim you no, can see... No, what was the verse? No, no, I oh. want to hear it. Oh, uh, hate want to hear the verse. Go ahead. Oh, uh, he said, if you claim you can see, then you will be guilty. Where's my Bible? Oh, okay. <laughs> Where's the word? You've covered that before, Jesse. What? Uh, you're blind, but since you claim you can see, you're, you're guilty. or Something like that. Oh, anyone that claim they can see cannot see. If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your your guilt remains. Absolutely. Meaning that, uh, you know how the intellectual think that they can see? Did you know? Yes, I hear you. Oh, you know how the intellectual Christians think they can see? Yes. It, but they can't see. And so they are guilty of that because they cannot see. Okay. Okay, that makes sense now. Amazing, Denzel. Call me again, and I wish you and your girlfriend well, man. Y'all stay with it, all right? Thank you, man. Have a good one. You too, buddy. Amazing. Let me take a break. Another hour, one more hour to go. Back in a moment. I just want to say thank you for everything that you do. Um, you you absolutely changed my life for the positive, and I, I just want to thank you. I was um 29-year-old beta, living at home with my mom, and just was living in fear and I in doubt and I was I couldn't hold down a job and then I found you and I started listening and I started just being more at peace and um, I forgave my mom and I forgave my father and it's like right after that everything just changed in my life and 
I was able to get a good job and I moved out and I live on my own now and everything has just changed and I just want to say thank you and I appreciate you for spreading that message. It really is a positive message. Amazing. That's good, man. I want people to know God love us in ways that there are no words to express because you have nothing to compare it to, right? Stay with your silent prayer. You haven't seen anything yet. It gets better. A whole lot of mess going on in the world. People stealing money. Uh, jobs getting cut. And women complaining after going into labor of not getting the right attention. This is the end of our two of the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. Get it off your chest Friday, April 5th, A.D. 2024. Stay tuned for hour three. JLP will be right back to your calls. Lines look like they're full. Uh, and he will get to you. But first, fake news, not fake news. There was an earthquake uh, in uh, New... In the East Coast, re- tentatively called a 4.8 magnitude earthquake, in uh, that hit from Philadelphia, felt from Philadelphia to Boston. I heard it was central, centralized. It was coming from uh, New Jersey, and people in New York felt it. 4.7, 4.8, something like that. So we wish you well, people. Nice, fun. Uh, Commie Nonsense Network CNN reports the FBI and the Los Angeles Police Department investigating one of the largest cash heists, also known as thefts, in the city's history after as much as $30 million was stolen from a money storage facility. The burglary happened on the night of Easter Sunday, the 31st of March, going into the 1st of April, April Fool's Day, at a facility in Silmar, a suburban neighborhood in the San Fernando Valley, where cat Cash from businesses across the region is handled and stored. Burglars gained access to the building. Communist buzzword, access, right? Uh, Entered the vault without setting off the alarms. Investigators believe it was a sophisticated group based on their ability to evade detection, so said a law enforcement source to Commie Nonsense. One area of focus for the investigation is whether the group had inside knowledge of the facility, so said the source who added that the heist was discovered on Monday, April Fool's Day. What a mess. Uh, But it wasn't a joke. It actually did happen, according to reports. Who knows? They're killing jobs. Mixed signals from the job market. The far-left female run outlet The Skim reports that yesterday a new report found U.S. companies cut over 90,000 jobs in March, the highest number since January of 2023, which is not that long ago but it's still under the evil Joe Biden administration. Jobs in government, finance, and tech accounted for the largest number of layoffs. According to the report, the findings could add more anxiety. Be anxious for nothing, said Jesus. Among active job seekers and cast some confusion, especially since hiring is supposed to be solid. Today's job report could provide greater insight on how the employment market is doing. Women complaining after going through labor. What's new? (laughs) Women deserve extra care during childbirth, say the ladies at the skim, without evidence. No. Yesterday, a new study found one in eight people said they've been mistreated, women, mistreated during childbirth. Researchers say it has become a regular occurrence, unsurprisingly, because they've pushed women into the so-called healthcare industry and, and men out. Many respondents saying healthcare so-called workers have ignored them refused their requests for help, or failed to respond in a timely manner. I blame DEI. Affirmative action. (laughs) Some uh, providers are also reportedly threatened to withhold certain care. uh, They've also reportedly threatened to withhold certain care, so-called care. The report found mistreatment increased in instances in which the patient identified as LGBTQIA+, who are also more prone to complaining, by the way or was unmarried, or had an unplanned C-section. Researchers said mistreatment can lead to post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. (laughs) I'm laughing, but it's rough for the ladies. Affect a person's decision to have another child. Decision, not decision. 
And uh, speaking of mess, Black & Decker has a steamer recall. Two million Black & Decker steamers have been recalled after more than 80 reports of burn injuries. Don't get scalding water or steam on you. The steamers can expel, spray, or leak hot water during use. So said the recall warning, which can injure the user. Elon Musk's X is giving back to giving out free blue check marks uh, to prominent users. I'm James Hake. Now back to JLP. Hour three. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the second hour of the show. To the third hour already. Whoa! Of the show today. You can get involved by calling 888-7753-773. Eight 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 seven seven Jesse J E S S E Jesse. My biblical question for this week: the biblical question: What c- connects you with the physical world? What connects you with the physical world? Amazing question. You can listen to the show on your iPhone or iPad if you're busy. You're not able to sit and watch it now. By calling the listen line at 641-793-1500, 641-793-1500. And you can podcast the show later. Uh, also, to donate and have your comments read out loud, go to buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Buymeacoffee.com slash JLP Talk. Or JLP on Cash App. JLP on, no, no, Bond JLP on Cash App. Bond JLP on Cash App. All right. And um, it is Friday. Every Friday, get it off your chest day. It is. Um, Express Yourself Friday. You Tom like a mug. You need to go to go to go to go and get yourself bleached because everything you say about black people and you're sitting up there looking like a tar baby. Uh, it might sound like a semantics argument, but he's a great alien. Ah! I wonder if he's been smoking pot. Yesterday on the Joe Friday show, we, we did this little game thing where uh, see how much spice you can eat. So the noodle really hot, very spicy. What the? And you saw Nick there sweating at the bone. Because <laughs> <laughs> Nick uh, spicy stuff was worse than all because he got his from the bottom of the bowl. 
where all the spies went to. <laughs> <laughs> Check out Joel Friday TV from yesterday. You'll see it. Joel Friday TV. He black. He black. Uh, it was funny. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> oh, God. Um, um, I found that verse that uh, Denzel mentioned just before the end of our conversation this morning. In uh, John 9.41, Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, we see, therefore your sin remaineth. And so what that is, uh, John, now that I see the verse, uh, salvation is of the heart. And you do hear a lot of Christians say that they are Christian, but they still sin. And they say, we're going to always sin. Blah, 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 right? They always sin. But what they are saying is that salvation is of the heart. Their hearts have not changed. They went down to the front of the church and accepted Jesus, but they're still angry, judgmental, uh, hateful people. They still judge themselves and others, though they claim to see, but they don't. And that's what that is, because when your heart change from anger to love, which is hatred, which is judgment, hatred, anyone that has hatred, play God. They judge. They make decisions. They think they know what they want. They have a plan for life and all that kind of mess. They are revengeful. So they are not, they're not seeing. But when you truly see all that change. Your heart is made anew. The nature of the devil is taken away from your heart. Amazing. And the other thing I want to mention is that <clears throat> you heard this on the hate news, NBC News. This is from NBC. 4.8 magnitude earthquake shook the East Coast. Shook the East Coast. Felt from Philadelphia to Boston including New Jersey and New York. <clears throat> That's weird. I'm not accustomed to hear. Once in a while, I think I've heard about earthquakes being felt on the east side. I mean, back east. You don't normally hear about that. So I wish y'all well over there in the east. Let me go to, there's one line open at 888-775-3773. Let me go to Manuel out of California. Manuel, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Thank you, Jesse. How are you doing? All, all this well. Thanks for calling. Um, I wanted uh, to ask you a question but um, about the Jesus and the Trinity thing. I'm not uh, religious at all. Okay. Never read the Bible. Kind of avoided all that. But um, every time I hear people argue the Trinity situation and Jesus is God, I always think to my mind, is Jesus a con man? Because they always go back to the idea that he had to, like, not show himself or he had to hide who he really was, like, that he was God, but he couldn't tell everyone that. And to me, it makes no sense that that he would have to lie to the people to persuade them to believe that um, he was Jesus the whole time when he was God. Um, but he never lied to the people that he was God. He never called himself God. It was a... And we're going to get to all of your calls. Sean will be back at the phone here in a minute. Bro. Um, he never lied to himself. He never said right. he was God. He always said he was the son and that his father right. sent him to where he died. It's just that the, the people call him that. They read the Bible and Satan tell them that or the preacher told them that. But as, as uh, I believe Hate said yesterday, Peter said that, when when Jesus asked, who am I? And Peter said, you're the father. I mean, you're the son. You know, you're, you're Jesus Christ, you're the son, something like that. And he said, right on, Peter, you're the guy I'm going to build my house on because you see it for yourself. And most people didn't see it back then for themselves as they don't see it for themselves now. They're just quoting right. what somebody else said or just read the Bible and the devil told them he's saying he's God. But he never said that. Right. I, I truly believe exactly what you said. Like, I, I've never even read the Bible. I didn't even believe in it. I didn't even force my ex-wife because she was extremely religious. And 
I see it clear as day when, when you say that, like, there's no way that he can be the father because he's like, you said, a brother Yeah, and he's guiding us brothers and sisters to the father. Yeah. And like, I'm telling you, Jesse, I used to just rag on religious people and I like, don't <laughs> feel bad, but I just see it now. Like, damn, man, you could have pulled your head out of your butt, but it's different now. I, I truly, really believe like everything you say. It's so crazy too. I do not want to read the Bible because I, I'm pr- about a hundred percent sure it will change me. Like I know what I have to do. Like you say, you got to sign your rights away to your child. Cause it's just split in the child. And I'm in the middle of that. And I see it like, I'm not, I didn't do it for the right reasons. Yeah. You know, I, I strictly did it to keep my ego alive and I'm still doing it now. And that's what like, I kind of, your biblical question, I feel like that's what ties me to this world is I care. I'm, I won't let go of my child. That's interesting. And even now you won't let go. Are uh, you still in, no. Are you still in court? No, 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 no. Oh, we're oh. all we're all done with all that. Like we kind of settled that situation. But I just know in the next couple of years that I'm gonna have to sign my rights away. She does things behind my back, and I'm always having to like correct her. And she's not my wife, you know. Like it's kind of hard. And I, my daughter comes to me, and she even tells me she's I'm afraid of my mother. You need to come talk to her. And I go in there and I handle it, but you know it just turns into a mess. You know she ends up taking it out on her when I'm gone. Yeah. Mothers are evil. Uh, Mothers have no love for the children. They are they are about themselves. They, they they have zero love for the children, and they have zero love for the father of the children. It's all about themselves, and they can give two cents and a holler about screwing up the kid. They can care less about it. They feel right. they get. Matter of fact, I promise you, they get a thrill from destroying the children. It feels oh, yeah. it feel good to them when the kids say, stop, mom, don't do that. No. The mother get a thrill from doing that, getting that kind of, getting that kind of reaction from the children. Yeah. What one, a mess, one huh? Yeah, one quick story and I'll let you go. In that same situation that you're talking about, the mother is ruining the children. My, She's got two other children from her husband. And my daughter, years ago, was going through a problem where she would, go number two while she's like watching a movie with friends. She was like FOMO, the fear of missing out. Wouldn't get up to go to the bathroom and she was hiding it. And she would just, you know, throw the whole underwear with the turd inside the washer and dryer. And her mom <laughs> just let it slide. And I finally caught onto it. So I snipped it and, and I straightened her out, made her clean it herself, showed her like, you don't do this. And I walked her through it and I made her go face her mom. To say, hey, I'm sorry I was doing this to you, but you need to keep me in line, too. Don't be afraid to to, to tell me the truth. And now her youngest daughter is doing the same exact thing. Wow. She went and had an accident yesterday at a softball game. So her mom went and bought her kettle corn and M&Ms right after it. Instead of, like, disciplining, like, hey, don't be doing this. She went and bought her sweets and, and pretty much just let her slide on it to let her know it's okay. Amazing. And to me, that's like pure evil because you're allowing your child to not see the consequences of what's going on or just not being the friend to your child. You're her parent. You're not her friend. You have to show her the right way. And if you don't, it's going to be problems and problems and problems down the road. Yeah, it is evil. A mother's love is evil. Nothing good comes from a mother's love. And the world has been deceived to think that uh, a mother's love is best, but it's not. Nothing turned out good with a mother's love. It's the father's love that made everything right. And it's not his love either. It's come from God, come from above, down through the father, to the, children, to the woman, to the children. Or if the woman don't want it, to the children. It comes straight from the father. And a mother's love is... It's just so it's evil, and it's just so unfortunate that Satan has used the woman and, and blind people to push this idea that a mother's love is best, a mother's love is good. It's simply not true. It destroys. Yeah. It does not build because of her nature being the nature of the devil, being the nature of evil. 
Yeah, my dad would always say, if you want the truth, you come to me. You want to be lied to, you go to your mother. Absolutely. 100%. Wow. Right on. What Appreciate a mess. You, I wish you well, man. Stay with it. Thank you. I wish you guys well, too. And another thing, when you stop loving your kids is when you're going to love them and you'll be able to protect them. But as long as you have right. that emotional love, there's nothing you can do. Right. Yeah, I, I step in between her and her mother. I know I'm doing it to protect her, but I can't do it forever. Yeah. It's going to come to a point where it's just too much, and she's in, uh, my child will be the one that suffers no matter what. So Absolutely. She's going to have to go through it. And I, put her, I brought her in this situation, and she'll come out of the situation. Like you say, the father brings or the children back to the father and the father to the children. It'll yeah. happen. It'll I work. know it will. That's right. Amazing. Thank you, Justin. All right, bud. I wish you well. Thank you. You All too. Right. Bye. Bye now. 888-7753-773. Let me go quickly to Rory. Rory, we've been waiting. I think you've been waiting a little minute here. Rory, we out of Florida. Rory. Yes, sir. Turn down the radio, Rory. Oh, uh, hold on. Yeah, hold on, buddy. Don't hang up. Turn the radio down. Uh, don't hang up, though. 888-7753-773. Let me go to Dana. Dana out of, is it Dana out of Indiana? Damon. Damon. It's Damon? Yes, sir. Oh, they had Dana. Damon, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi. Hey, Hello. Damon. I just wanted to comment on the, the Jesus is God thing. Okay. And I think it's, I think it's far more valuable that God is in Jesus. And I think when they, when we say, that Jesus is God, it's removing us from the equation. And I think that was Jesus' whole point, that he's saying that God is in me. And everybody knows, and all those Christians and stuff, we believe that Jesus is our example. But then when Jesus said, God is in me, it's like they want to re re remove that from the equation. And they say, <laughs> you know, G Jesus is God. And then, like, God had to take him, put himself on the cross and suffer like, he didn't know that before, even though he created everybody. You know, and that, that's just valueless to me. That don't mean anything to me. When they say he had to come to earth and suffer, like, that, that God himself, the creator, like, he didn't know it before. <laughs> but, you know. A good point, just, man. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the whole point. Yeah. The, the Christians, they want to believe the lie. They want to be, it feel good for them to believe that Jesus is God because now they don't have to work on themselves. They have put Jesus as at a distance from them. And they have, the devil has convinced them that this, they can never reach Jesus. They can never do this because they have made him God. And so the Christians get a thrill from believing that because they don't have to work on themselves anymore. They don't want to accept Jesus as their brother. That means that, wow, I got work to do if I want to be like my brother. They don't want to see him for who he really is. So you just have to leave him in their hell. Let them, God leave him in their hell. He leave them right in their intellect, which is hell, except for those who finally cry out, you know what, something wrong here. This is not working. What's wrong? And then they'll start to see and overcome it. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you, Damon. Amazing call. You Appreciate welcome. it. Yeah. All right, man. Bye. Bye now. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, Rory phone didn't work. I mean, he gone, huh? Oh, okay. Rory dropped. Let me go to a first-time caller, Dion. Dion out of California. Dion, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Thank you, Jesse. Good morning. Good morning, Dion. I just wanted to say that you have a great show over there. You, Hake, uh, Chris, Sean, everybody uh, doing an amazing job. Thank you. Big fan of yours. Uh, Jordan Peterson, Kevin Samuels. Thank you, man. Uh, That's so, amazing. Yeah, uh, great people, great people. Hopefully we start turning on uh, this state and uh, the crazy ideas that's going on. Yeah, hopefully, man. What a mess. 
Yeah, what a mess. Hey, um, I was going uh, over the biblical question and uh, okay, I wanted to respond what, to that. What connects you with the physical world? Well, what connects me with the physical world is the reality. I live in reality. Meaning what? Meaning that I believe in facts. I don't believe in uh, fantasy, magic, myth, everything that's invented uh, in the mind of a man. It's not real until it's proven. Amazing. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, um, I'll put my little two cents in on Sunday if the Lord is willing and the creek don't rise. Thank you for that. Yeah, sure, definitely. Uh, had, thank you again. Had you thought yep. about that? What connects me? Because God said be in the world but not of it, right? Had you thought what connects me to the world? Had you thought about that before? Uh, no, I haven't thought about that. I, I'm going to think about it. Yeah, amazing. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, Jesse. I'll call back again. All right, please do. Have a good one. All right, buddy. Amazing. 888-7753-773. Super Chat. Super Chat. Super Chats. That handyman is a monthly supporter over on Rumble, J.C. Lee Peterson Rumble. Mexicans never owned California. Laughing face emoji to, with tears. It was <laughs> controlled by Spain, just like Mexico was controlled by Spain. Are the missions on the coastline Mexican missions or Spanish missions? Spanish, obviously. Laughing face emoji. Amazing. Thank you. He also <laughs> says the Mexicans and Indians came to the Americans for help to fight off the Spaniards. So a thank you would be better. Nice. <laughs> Amazing. There is a lot that this country and, and the Western countries, part of the world, right? They owe white people a lot of gratitude, but they won't give it to them because they're jealous. They won't say, you know what? I appreciate you making such great country and allow me to be a part of it. I'm going to give back. I'm going to make it better. I'm going to add the best I can to make it better. But instead, their jealousy want to destroy it. Jealousy is evil. And it never wants to build. It wants to destroy. The human heart is evil. Human being, yeah, look, you can doubt me. Let's say, you know what, and I tell you, don't believe me anyway. If you don't see it for yourself, you don't know if it's true or not. But I want, I want to encourage you, prove me wrong. Look at your own heart and see your anger and your hatred. See how wicked you are at heart. And you're going to see that human beings are really evil. And, and, and that's why God said, trust no angry person. Do not trust an angry person. An angry person is evil. I don't care if it's family member, whatever. They're evil. And that's why no one gets along. Husband and wife don't get along because their hearts are wicked. Amazing, huh? Thank you. Okay, over on uh, Rumble, a Rumble rant from Base Nation donation. If you Mexican, all thoughts are hola all the time. <laughs> That's right. Hola. Gracious. Don. Thank you. Donnie Girl's idea. My silly idea for the day. For every acre illegals occupy, here we claim an acre on their homeland. Okay it fairly. Nice idea. You're going to have to fix it up, though. Indeed. Yeah, thank you. Punchy bought a coffee. Would love to see you and a old liberal guest have a conversation again. Any plans for that in the future? You made him look like a beta last time. Laughing face emoji with tears. Uh, oh, liver, yes? Yeah. Oh, thank you. We'll, see, we'll look into it. Thank you. Send your tips to the producer. Yeah. All tips to producer at jessaleepeterson.com. I Ev appreciate it. But thanks for the support. Yeah. Evgeny Cro and he spelled punchy with a Y. He's no Y in punchy. P-U-N-C-H-I-E. Evgeny Crosby with the diamond. Jesse on the war room with Harrison Smith. Amazing. I really enjoy it. I was thinking of the talent on uh, InfoWars last night. And they have some amazing talent on InfoWars. Orange Schwerter and, and um, Harrison, Harrison Smith. Smith and 
the owner of the Infowar and Alex, my competitor. Very talented people. If you didn't check, catch it, podcast Infowar last night from yesterday. With, uh, War Room with uh, Harrison Smith but filling it, in for right, Owen Troy. Owen. It would be on the Owen, right? Yeah, War Room. Yeah. Thank you. Urinal Chills says, got a late start, so I'm only 46 minutes into the show. Never thought of this before, but why aren't mail carriers armed? Or are they? Well, they be, I think they have pepper spray. <laughs> I don't know if that's enough for these uh, rabid uh, criminals. Especially now you got you have uh, imported criminals from other parts of the world. They don't care about uh, um, pepper spray. Yeah. Spray. It's interesting, too, how they, they dress in all black. Right. And they cover their faces, and they can just... It's the, crazy to see that. The criminals, huh? Yeah. Terrible. Emma bought three coffees. Thank Th- you, though. Thank you, Mr. JLP. Amazing team. Thanks for all you do. Thank you. Thanks Thank for your support. Thank you, Emma. Yeah. Ninja Gini from WD41. Have a good weekend, everyone. Thank you. You too. Have an amazing weekend. I hope I see you at church on Sunday at 11 a.m. Doors open at 1030. com slash church. Thank you. That's over from DLive. Stan 69 with a diamond on DLive. The Israel of today is false. It was created by man. The what? The Israel. What's that? The country that's just a year older than you. I am older than Israel. (laughs) No, you're a year younger. One year younger. Wow. I'm as old as a country. Nice. God's country. I wonder will I get to be as old as the 115-year-old guy that died recently. Yeah. The oldest man in the world. I think he'll always be older than you. You say so? You don't catch up to people. He did. Right. Oh. Maybe you're maybe So you're I right. hope I surpass. Nice. He ain't getting no more age. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. At oh, this there he goes. There he is. And he's not fat. Does he have teeth? No. Doesn't look like it. <laughs> no, he looks like he has eyes. <laughs> look like his eyeballs are gone, too. <laughs> That's scary. Okay, DD54 bought a coffee. It's amazing that before, that's probably how skinny we were when God made us. And then the fat came. Yep. Indeed. Oh, there go his eyes. Amazing. 115 years old, now he's dead. May his soul rest in peace. DD54 bought a coffee. Hey, Jesse. No, I and Jesse. Right. I have a question about dealing with autistic children. I have a four-year-old son who has been labeled autistic. I'm fortunate where I can stay home and raise him while my husband works. However, people are pressuring me to get him into a program because he has lots of energy. I'm skeptical about these programs. What are your thoughts? Should I continue working on myself and keeping my son home, taking it day by day, or should I enroll him in a program? Thank you. Well, I don't know what you, if you should do that or not. I can't advise you on that. You need to see that for yourself. But I do advise you to be patient with him. Be patient. She'll love by being patient. And if you don't know exactly what to do as far as putting him in a program or not, if you don't know what to do, do nothing until you see clearly what to do. But that's up to you. But I definitely advise you to be patient. And in that patient, which is perfect love, anything is possible. Anything good is possible, all right? I wish you well with that. I understand it. Thank you. You can ask your husband, too. She has a husband? already. Yep, her husband works. Oh, ask your husband. Maybe she has. Just, oh. She didn't well, say patient. that she has or not. Above all things, be patient in all things, all right? I wish you well, though. You and your family. At this point, just call me Mike. Three coffees. Hey, J-E-S-S-E. You often say that children are a present are present with God before the mother put her will on them. So I was thinking as nostalgic, a call from God to return to the Father. When I was a kid, I did ask to God for the rain, if he was real, and it rained just like you said in an interview. Laughing face, blue heart, salute emojis. (laughs) I would never forget that. As a kid, I was walking down the road one day down in Alabama on that plantation, beautiful since you had a day, and I'm like, okay, God, if, if, if there's a God, you're a God, let it rain. 
and it rained right in front of me. I'm like, what the? But not right in front of me, but down the road. And then I said, okay, if you a God, let it thunder in the west. And it thunder. There were no clouds either time. Amazing. I got it. Amazing. The, the uh, treasure chest is now open on D Live. <laughs> Thank you for that super tattoo. I'll be back in a moment. We have a counseling service, and I have to admit, thanks to God, it is the best counseling service on this side of heaven. I counsel with men and women, families, individuals around the world. Most people are unhappy, they're miserable, they have rough lives, they're depressed, suicidal, young and old, of all races. I understand, I know why, and I do understand it. Because exactly what's happening in me is happening with everybody outside of me, inside of them. And I've noticed that with those who really, really, really want to understand, they overcome it just like that. Out of one counseling session. If you need counseling, you can go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-2663. 800-411-BOND. Best counseling service on this side of heaven. Okay, welcome back. There is one line open at 888-7753-773. Some quick announcements. Then we're going to finish this phone call. We're going to try to get to all the calls, the super chats, and all that. Number one, the Hake Report is coming up at the top of this hour, right after my show. The Hake Report.com. From 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific time, the Hake Report. And then at 12 noon, brand new episode of the Fallen State.tv. The Fallen State.tv. I had a very interesting discussion with Loza, L O Z A, Loza Alexander. And Lozer is a conservative rapper and producer, best known for his version of Let's Go Brandon. Watch this. Next time on The Fallen State. What's important to me, man, is our people. You know, our people to wake up. You fear hell? Absolutely. And there's no way I believe that when you die, nothing happens. I have more anger and resentment towards my enemies, ex-girlfriends. When you forgive your parents, you're going to love your enemy. You and I and no one else has a right to be angry at anyone. Have you ever been a slut maker? Nah. <laughs> at 12 noon today, the fatherstate.tv. And check out the Father State. Donate there uh, on the fatherstate.tv. Uh, the fallestate.tv slash donate and you can do it on locals as well also at 4 p.m. the American Anchor Baby the American Anchor Baby on fire flying high it's going to be a smooth sailing today and no crazy people are on the plane crazy people are not allowed to fly on the American Anchor Baby flight. Just not allowed. It's going to be smooth sailing. Amazing. And Sunday Morning Fellowship. Sunday Morning Fellowship at 11 a.m. Doors open at 1030. You can watch it live online if you're not in town. Well, you can watch it live online even if you're in town, but come on down by going to rebuildingtheman.com slash church. 
rebuildingtheman.com slash church. Some people don't realize we are in Los Angeles. We're located in Los Angeles. There were uh, a guy at the men's forum last night, and he, you can take it off now. And he thought that, uh, he didn't know we were in L.A. He finally realized, they're in L.A., he lived in the area. He's like, what the? And, men's, and, t- and the men's forum last night, every first Thursday night for men only, and then third Thursday night for ladies only, last night forum was, Deep, 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 deep. It, I, I don't know if we ever had a meeting, a, a men's forum that deep before. And we have some really amazing ones, but for some reason they keep getting more deeper and amazing and amazing and amazing. I ended up going to bed late again last night. I closed my eyes only for a moment, and the moment was gone. And it was amazing. It was worth it. So stay with it, guys. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. Stay with it. And also, a quick reminder that I'm going back to the phones and then the Super Chats. Um, Today, write this down. Mark mark it down on your cell phone, whatever. Today at 3 p.m., Joel Friday will be posting highlights, highlight clips Highlights clip from the Spicy Noodle Challenge at 3 p.m. Posting a highlight clip from the Spicy Noodle Challenge today at 3 p.m. on JLP Network on YouTube channel. JLP Network on YouTube channel at 3 p.m. today. I know that's a lot, but that's what's going on. A busy day today. All right, so let me go to a call. And then Super Chats, and then more calls. All right, let me go to a first-time call in Tennessee, Mike. Mike, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hello, Mr. Jesse. Hey, Mike. All is well. Thanks for calling. Yes, sir. So I have two questions for you. The first one, it's how... Do you know when forgiving someone becomes negative for you or bad for you? That's the first question. Well, if you have truly forgiven, it cannot become bad because when you forgive, and forgiveness means I'm sorry for being angry at you. I was wrong. I realize now you can't help yourself. Once you see that you're wrong for being angry, and once you forgive, then your heart changed from uh, anger to love, that's what salvation is, it can't be bad anymore. It's impossible. Okay. What made so you ask that? in terms of relationship? I'm sorry? As well. Go ahead. In terms of a relationship, if someone cheats on them and they forgive them and continue on with the relationship, when does that become negative for you? You know, when, especially when children are involved, things of that nature. Well, if the person that cheated, the husband or the wife, and they're like truly, truly sorry, you can see that they're sorry, and they're never going to do it again, things would be fine. But if they say, I'm sorry, but you don't trust them that they are truly sorry, then you're going to, you or the wife will bug the husband, and they will make the situation even worse because the husband or the wife cannot prove that they're sorry about it. Either you forgive them, or not. But once you forgive them, things should be fine. All right. My second question, Mr. Jesse, and I just want to say I love you first of all, but the second question is how does someone prevent themselves from using you as their strength to get by? For instance... Oh, good question, know, man. What is the what? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, say, say you know, whenever they're feeling bad or anything, there's some people that might be suicide. Not me, but I'm just saying in general. Some people might be suicidal or whatever, and they turn you on, and it helps them. How do they prevent themselves from using you as that instead of building that in, in themselves? You know what I mean? 
That's a good question. Number one, when they turn on, let's say they contemplated suicide because they had been tempted by the devil, and they turn on and they hear the truth, they're not using me. They are using the truth that's coming through me. And then if they just realize that, stay conscious of that, eventually the truth will overwhelm them and take complete control of their life. But that's fine until uh, uh, they are able to allow the truth to completely take over. And uh, if they become aware of that, it will happen naturally. Okay. All right. That's that's amazing. And I love you, Mr. Jesse. Thank you for taking my call. Absolutely. Stay with us. Stay. It gets better, all right? Yes, sir. All right, Thank man. Thank you. You're welcome. Amazing. 888-7753-773. Carter is out of Virginia. He's been waiting a while. Carter, welcome to the show. You're on the air. JLP, good morning, man. Good morning. How are you? All is well, man. How are you? Good. All is well. Thanks. Nice. I want to answer your biblical question. What connects you with the physical world? I'd say wanting more. Wanting more. But I also, Give me an example of what you mean. Uh, like wanting for something. Oh, um, okay. Interesting, wanting man. Wanting for something physical. That's very, very interesting. Yeah, but I also see that that's, you know, just another thought. Because um, really when when you're still, you don't want anything. Amazing. I want to respond so badly, Carter. I can hardly stand it, but I got to wait until Sunday. Awesome, man. Hey, can we get a Satan is your daddy shirt? Yeah, Satan, a good idea. Okay, I see the guys write it down now. Thank you for that. Awesome, we'll get it done. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. And then there's one more thing I wanted to say. I was talking to some people this week at work, and I, there's two kind of judgments, and I think one of them Christians call discernment. But the first one is thinking you're better than somebody. Yeah. And that's the evil judgment. But the second one is, you know, seeing somebody is maybe a child predator or something, and you don't put your kids in that situation. They couldn't see the difference between the two, but that's what I see it as. True, true judgment is when you have an opinion about anything. True judgment is when you think that you know what you want. True judgment is when you, like, you know, you, you just mentioned um, if you put your child in harm's way, right? Uh, child right. predator. Um and, and then let's say that I saw the ch I saw that the, ch the child was put in home way. If I have an opinion about it, then I'm judging, and that is not good. We have yeah, to live. Just, we have to live a life of no thoughts at all, mm -hmm. no thinking. Yeah. And once there are no thoughts, there are no opinion. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. It really does, but um, it's almost like I can see it, but I can't see it full the, all the way through just because I'm still growing. Right. The fact that you want to see it, it will be made clear. Don't force it. Yeah. Thank you, man. Awesome, man. All right. Amazing. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. Bye now. I'll put my two cents in on Sunday. Super Chat. Super Chat. Super, super. Super Chat. Don, Donnie, girl's idea, rumble rant. If they don't like it, keep them home. I hear Guatemala has amazing avocados. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Thank you. That's right. Don says with another rumble rant, NJ, New Jersey just had an earthquake and LA is quiet. Bizarro world. At least the sun came back out today. We are calm in the Lord. In the name. Amazing. Thank you. Stan69 with a diamond. Hake's birthday is finally over. Nobody mentions it. Finally, thank God. <laughs> a year was enough. Canadian David. Today is Doug's birthday. Oh, yeah? My, the, uh, uh, uh. This week it is anyway, right? The internet guy. Yeah. Well, not today. The webmaster. Right. It was on Wednesday, I think. All, Amazing! All this week it's his birthday. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> 
Happy birthday, Doug. Nice. He's not here right now, so we can't sing happy birthday. Okay. We'll do it on Sunday. Canadian David says, you let... Thank you. You see by letting go and being witness to life in the presence of God. Thank you. Amazing. That handyman with a very generous donation, a rumble rant, says, thanks, JLP crew. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Shout out to the top contributors, WD41, Stan69, Aries1. These are D-Live contributors. Kid Combo 1.0, Evgeny Crosby, Zealous Hermit, and the rest of the supporters over on the D-Live crew. And thank you, guys. I do believe that that is all for... Riley JM got five coffees. Bring back, bring back, bring back my country to me. <laughs> Appreciate your bring show, Jesse. Back. Thank you. Amazing country. And Western Gen C Tuesday. bought 20 coffees. Very generous. No Who's message. That? Gen C. Amazing. Nice. Not to be confused with Gen Z. Thank you. This is Gen C. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. So now I believe that's all for now. Thank you. Oh, grateful for you, JLP and crew, says Coffee Talk with Sandra with a diamond. Thank you, Coffee Talk. Nice. Oh, amazing. <laughs> um, last night meeting was amazing. Indeed. The men's forums, first Thursday of the month. Yeah. Women's forums, third Thursday of the month. Um, 7 p.m. at Bond in Los Angeles. Yeah. Thank you all for your support as well. Thank you. Let me go quickly to the phones and see how many calls we can squeeze in here. Rory, let's try again. Rory from Florida. Yes, sir. You're on the air. Thank you, Jesse, for taking my call, sir. Yes, sir. I keep on covering questions, and I need your help. Um, need your help to help maybe solve some of them. I, I can't, I can't for the like of me with my resources find the uh, the questions to, uh, to 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 have them answered. So I, I'm talking about the affirmative action. Uh, this time today. Yesterday we talked about uh, the the white children going to the all black schools. Remember that? I do. Hey, so you, because um, of time, your question for me is what? What percentage of blacks use the affirmative action? Were who were they? Did they get degrees? How many of them got degrees from it, using it? I, I, I mean, we paid I into don't... this system to. I don't know. This, know. I, I don't know. I don't even know right. how you can find that information, or well, even if it's possible. Well, then, me too. I agree with you, sir. But I was wondering, do you think that they would keep track of that, right? Somebody would have had to. Where, who would have done that? That would be public information, too, wouldn't it? Yeah. You would think they did, but, you know, I don't know, man. It's a good well, question, no, though. Listen, yeah, but why would... I mean, yeah, I'm just saying... Uh, it baffles me because I, I mean, I really wanted to know this stuff. I mean, how, how many people, how many people uh, are in positions that used affirmative action? You know, that was a racist, a very racist uh, thing that, that 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 was. That whole thing was bad. It was evil. Um, it was definitely not good for the blacks, uh, and it, it was not you know, good for many, the white. You well, know, let me do this right. I have no idea, but I got to run because of time. I want to get in as many calls as possible. Thank you, Rory. Let me go to, is it Amir? Amir, first time call out of New York. Amir, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Oh, hey, Jesse. Hope all is well with you, man. All is well. Thank you. Yeah, I know you're pressed for time, so I'll go kind of fast. Um, I'm 42, widowed, and a single father, and I'm I, I'm doing your silent prayer, and it really has helped me wake up more and more every day. And um, I find myself thinking about dating a lot, and I noticed that with some of your um, past uh, podcasts, you mentioned not to focus on dating, but just, you know, focus on doing what God wants me to do. I'm just wondering if I could get your input at all. Yeah, don't focus on anything but what is right. You keep your eyes on the not you meaning the thoughts and the feelings. You just watch those thoughts and feelings, let them pass. And then um, your mind is becoming clearer and clearer and clearer. Life is starting to happen naturally without your effort. And if it's meant for you today, it'll happen naturally. It'll happen perfectly. You will be in charge of it. And if it doesn't, you'll be in perfect peace. It will be as though nothing is missing. 
Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, we're only human beings, meaning men and women, are only mm-hmm. supposed to seek the kingdom of God and what is right. And all will be added. Life will be added unto you naturally. So don't let the devil make you say, oh, you need to be dating again. You need, it's all lies. Mm-hmm. Let yeah, that pass. Yeah, talking to me. Definitely. Yeah, yeah let so. that pass. Okay, I will. I'll keep doing your um, silent prayer, and I'll just, uh, I don't know, kind of scary right now because I'm, I'm taking it one day. I'm literally taking it one footstep at a time, it seems like. Like every, I have to take it one minute at a time. But, Absolutely. Yeah, so I just trust that, you know. I'm, and, well, I'm happy I found you, too, first of all. I thank God for uh, bringing me to your podcast and your information. It really has helped me kind of just keep moving forward. Yes, one day at a time. One moment at a time, don't look back, there's no future. Don't look forward, there's, I mean, there's no past. Don't look forward, there's no, I prom, there's no future. I promise you, I can literally tell you for sure, there's no past and no future. All that exists is right now. Okay, and yeah, and I think part of me sees that it, all there is is now, and that's like the scary part. I so know. I'm planning, so, I, I, but I, I, I know what you mean. But that's only because you're letting go of the illusions. And when you let go of the illusions, you feel like nothing, you have nothing to hang on to. But the truth got you. You'll be fine. Okay. I will do that. I'll keep going forward. All right. Call me again, Amir. I wish you well. I wish you well, too. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Amazing. Let me go quickly to Tony out of Pennsylvania. Uh, Blah, 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 blah. Tony, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi, Jesse. I'll try to say this real quick because I know you are short on time. Um, about the uh, Jesus being God, I went to Catholic school in the 1960s. Now, when we went to confession, there was a prayer we were told to take after confession with the Our Father and the Hail Mary, which says, Hail Mary, full of grace, and basically the sign says, Holy Mother of God. So I think because Christianity was mixed with paganism, you have the worship of the female mixed with the Our Father. When I went to school, uh, in the 60s, from like 65 to 72, uh, we always said Our Father right up right in the beginning. So I, I don't know if that's confusing a lot of people, but I don't remember ever believing that, that um, Jesus was God. Me either. When I was growing up, that was never even heard of. It was clear, according yeah. to the Bible, and the older people there were talking about it, he was the son. And that, yeah, exactly. And that we, whatever the son owned, we own it. We are... The Father sent the Son to get us. It's it just exactly. it's so clear, but yet, I understand, though, the intellect is very deceptive. And another thing, I, real quick, when I, I think during the 60s when the Marxist movement was really strong, and uh, I do remember early in my Catholic school, we had a thing where we would say, Christ has died and Christ has risen, and that was it. And then around two years later in the Catholic school, I'm looking back now, they went, Christ has died, Christ and risen, Christ will come again. Now, that really confusing after I got thinking about that now, at my age, and I realized, again, it's paganism mixed with Christianity. Yeah. They always believe every three days the sun will come back. So I think people are waiting around, and like you said, I, I don't believe, I believe Jesus already, Jesus already came in. He's already come. He's in us. He's already here, right now, exactly. right here. Right. But right. I got to run, though. Tony, call yes. me again. Amazing call. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, buddy. Amazing. No wonder the Pope is tech. You believe all that? Let me go to first time call out of Colorado. Uh, Phoenix out of Colorado. Phoenix, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Well, I can't believe it. I'm on the phone, man. <laughs> man, I appreciate you. I respect you. You a lot. <laughs> You opened my mind, man. And keep on the good word, brother. And you're right. Jesus is in this. He has to call the Spirit of God, brother. You're right. You keep preaching. And you're doing good. Amazing. And you're right, dude. You know. Thank you, Phoenix. You know. I appreciate it. Stay with it, all right? And you, yes, sir. And you too. And I, you know, like I said, yeah, I'm tore up, man. But. Well, look here, I've I seen stuff, you know, you, I, look, I was just wanting to tell you, man, you know, look, you are right. You totally are. But look, the world is really complicated. 
But I wanted to say that you made me reflect from me watching your shows and stuff. You made me reflect back on my life when I was younger. And you're totally right. My mom turned me against my dad. My dad wasn't able to, didn't raise, I'm the oldest. He wasn't able to raise my brother and sister up the right way because my mom, and, I, and I, it's like, you know, wow, amazing, you know? Amazing. And, 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 you know, you let me see that. And then I have a son. And then I, I was, I'm a, you know, I'm a good dad to him. I'm sorry, you'll always be a dad. And, you know, you got to do the right thing. Yeah. No yeah. matter what. And you are telling, you telling these folks the right thing. But, and like I was want to say, you know, like the regular Joe like me, uh, Jesse, you helping me out. You helping people out like us. <laughs> but these rich so called experts. They ain't one of them called you back and said, Jesse, you know, you made me see the light, brother. Yeah. And I know they ain't. And, and you know, we got to fight that good fight, brother. How old are That's you now, Phoenix? I'm, I'm almost 60, man. Right on. Stay with it, man. I'm, I am. I'm your, I'm your generation, man. <laughs> I know where you're coming from. I got, I got, I got black friends. I got white friends. I got every kind of friend. You don't look at the world like that, man. Right. It's, you got bad people, and you got good people. Absolutely. And then you got evil people, and then you got real good people. So, you know, we got, we got to figure that out. And you're right. That's, that's it right there. Amazing. And these people fooling themselves, fooling themselves. They delusional. And I've got to see on your show. I'm like, you know, really, when you say amazing. Yes. It is. It is amazing. It is. <laughs> <laughs> you have a great day, brother. We, hey, we going to be all right because, hey, Jesus is coming back. Thank That's you, right. Phoenix. Okay? Call, call me all again, right. buddy. Stay with it, all right? All right, man. All right. You okay, I'm sorry. How about it, Ty? The Heat Report is coming up now. Thank you, Phoenix. The Heat Report is coming up now. Um, Joe Friday doing a special thing on at 3 p.m. on uh, JLP Network on YouTube channel there. The American Anchor Baby at 4 and uh, brand new episode of The Father State. Thank you for your support. I see you at church on Sunday. Preston out of Sweet Home, Alabama. I wanted to get to you, Preston. Uh, especially since you're from Alabama. What the... Uh, and Rick out of Hampton, Virginia. And somebody just dropped. Get on that straight and narrow. Forgive. Apologize for being angry at your mama. Like she screwed you up. She didn't mean it. Her mama did it to her. Uh, forgive your father. God will forgive you. you change your heart from anger to love and set you on your path. You really, really will. I'm telling you this as a witness. Stop identifying with things. Don't call it nothing you. None of those things. So you can die from identity and only identify with the truth. I'm out of time. Bye, y'all. Thank you, callers. Bye, y'all. What Amazing. the? Bye, y'all. I'll see you Sunday. If the Lord is willing. And the creeps don't rise. Thank you for your support. Bye, y'all. So, here's what I recommend. I invite you to download my silent prayer, and I want you to start doing it. You just download it, get the points of how to do it, and then after a while, you just do it on your own. It's going to point you in the right direction that your life will be returned to you from God. He will give you your life back because anyone and all people who has anger, they're not themselves. You are the person that you are angry at. That's why it's so important to get to know yourself so that you can see who you're angry at. And if you're doing the hooping and hollering prayers and things like that, some people get up, oh, praise the Lord, hoop and holler, bless my mama, bless my daddy. Continue to do it. Do both. You will see if you want to stay with the hooping and hollering or do you want to be still and know God. So my gift to you, no charge, at rebuildingtheman.com slash church. So I asked the question, are you better than a child molester? I've discovered over the 30 years of counseling 
the one thing that's missing the one thing that's missing, and I think because it's not taught in the homes or talked about, we don't have examples of it, right? Is love. Our theme this year is to bring back Christianity, to love God with all our heart, soul, and might, our neighbor as ourselves, and uh, to endure. And there, when you're in a fallen state, people will judge the molester, but think they're better than the molester. And I ask, well, why do you think you're better? What I realized, it doesn't matter what you think about yourself or how much you have or don't have or how you accomplish things in life or don't. If you have no love, you have nothing. 